Enjoy your juice, man. Thank you. Freshly squeezed orange. Now, Ivan. Thanks for having me, by the way. Man. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. I've been, we, I've been wanting to do this with you for... It's been two years, I think. That conversation we had at the old Woodfords. A long time ago. And I said to you... I'd love to interview you one day. I'd, yeah, sit down on, and have on, a, podca a podcast, podcast, right? Manifestation. Yes. That didn't <laughs> exist. And because I remember having conversations with you at the old Woodfords and the philosophical viewpoints that you hold were extremely thought-provoking to me. And I think we are on the same wavelength about a lot of topics, but even so, you're on a whole bunch of different wavelengths that are quite different from the way ordinary conventional wisdom is preached. 100%. And so this is a pretty special situation now because you are on the back of a 30-day fast. Yeah. Okay, but we have juice right here. Yeah. And that means there are calories here. I break my fast tomorrow, so. But there's calories in there. So that means, does that mean you're technically breaking the fast or is it a fast from uh, just food and it's just really- from solids, yeah, no, no food. Okay, so, so you'll have- um, I haven't had that much juice over the course of the last 30 days. Maybe every four or five days I'd have a juice at nighttime, just the same okay. processes through my body. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just been water. So it's been so, very, very low calorie. Yeah, this is more just to introduce a little bit of nutrients before I start eating my fruit and, and vegetables and stuff. Okay. So the plan is to go vegan for four to four to eight weeks mm. just to get um just to get a bit of good cellular energy through my body. Okay. Um and then look to reprogram that with fish and, and meat. So Interesting. See how we go. So but to bring us to the podcast, the reason why I did go on is when we first actually met, I think we, we got along on a different level. Yeah. There was a different, I think, a different understanding, different connection. So it was more so me coming on to support what, what you're trying to do and also have, um, have that conversation that you don't have in everyday life. Like mm. sometimes you walk around like a, like a robot, um, yes sir, no sir, and you don't actually get to communicate what you're thinking or what you're feeling um, most of the time because people won't understand and uh two because of the judgment out there so there's a lot of people out there who just yes sir no sir 100 percent. three bags full and, sir and i can't i can't be that guy i don't want to be that guy no you can't, i can't be a proud uh, crowd pleaser but then if you challenge the status quo you obviously ruffle feathers as you've done before in 100%. your own way but leaders lead right mm. like someone's gonna gonna speak up someone's gonna take the lead and and influence is probably the, the wrong word but lead lead by example I'm probably the last person to, to lead by example when it comes to um, past situations, but everything's a learning curve. Okay, so, so there's a lot to talk about. So sure. number one is why did you want to do this fast? What sparked this? The reason for the fast? Yeah, um, I'm sure it's multifaceted. The main reason was to get closer to God. Mm. Like I had this urge that there was, some, there was a higher calling and for the last two, three years, I think I've been ignoring that. And ignoring that power within saying, hey, try this or try that or try to go this way. I think I was in fear of my own greatness and fear of success. That's ultimately what it was. What is, everyone has a different definition of God. Yeah. And I think people get emotional and get very like, pick teams with religion, it's like yeah. a team. How do you define it? Define God? Yeah. Is that well, even possible well, first for of you? All, first of all, not from a religious perspective, I would like to say throughout the fast, I did actually start following Jesus Christ. Okay. Is that something you've never done before or you uh, raised like I, that? I always had a fascination with God. I always had this thing inside me, a, a strong feeling, a strong power, knowing that there's something inside of me and knowing that something existed, yet being in denial of that because I didn't understand it. So through this fast, I've gathered a lot of uh, understanding and it's um, very interesting stuff. So does it sound... It goes back to what you were saying about, um, about religion. Picking teams? Picking teams. Like there's no team to pick if you understand kingdom philosophy. What is that? What is kingdom philosophy? I feel like we're about to dive into something. Uh, I, like it's just one of those situations. I'm still learning. I'm not going to claim to know everything. Mm. As far as kingdom philosophy, it's a place that is created within yourself. Is that it's something not, I should Google? It's not external. Is I'm happy to link you to some stuff. Is that a Googleable thing? I, I don't think it's one thing that I want to talk about on my first first podcast. Maybe later down the track because oh, I think it's important to um, 
to create something first and then for people to say how did you create that okay. so when people ask uh, something based on evidence as opposed to me talking about what i know like i'd rather fulfill what i know through wisdom mm. and that brings us back to what i what i've been learning is uh, king solomon asked for three things and that was knowledge understanding and wisdom so just breaking that down and understanding that uh um knowledge is information understanding is comprehension of the information and wisdom is applied action of mm. the information that you've you've um, inherited so understanding those processes and those protocols gives you the ability to have access to the kingdom and the kingdom philosophy is this your own philosophy you created uh, no i've been studying so okay i don't want to reference who That's and okay. what but um over time just because it is a touchy subject so for me it's like what what is what's what's success to you alex what is success to you what would you define or or say success is? i think it's changed over the years and i think it's become now for me is living a life of meaning fulfillment purpose. and joy yeah and um, yeah purpose those three things have never been more important to me when i was younger i used to want you know we come from similar backgrounds you're still in it though but me even with basketball i think what comes with some of this uh the field of basketball and wanting to pursue with that is the it's superficial superficial yeah 100 the, the superficial accolades this glorified thing and it's like basketball yes. is so much deeper than that yes but what comes with that is you know money success fame Cars, influence skills, clothes, yes all that sort of stuff. and that was my mentality when i was younger and that's what I mean by knowledge, understanding, wisdom. Like we, we weren't taught to break that stuff down. It's like, oh, that's the dream. And all of a sudden, the deeper you go into it, it's like people are taking advantage of you and people are making money off you and people are creating the pathways for your position. And it's like, it's a whole different ball game. And we're not educated on any of that stuff. You've just got this dream and this vision to be a hooper. And it's like, that comes with a whole heap of other shit. Right, that you soon realize. 100%. It almost like uh, clouds your journey and, and and lane that you're trying to walk through I, I don't know about that it's like you have a dream of playing basketball but it's like family heritage plays a huge huge role generational curses plays a huge role like a lot of the kids that that go through have a stable foundation and the ones that don't are looked after based on talent mm. so like it matters who you're who came before you 100%. your parents and parents, parents. 100%. family heirlooms play a huge role in success or six what's perceived to be success so right. for me what, what success means to me is how many people or how many people's lives you can impact in a in a manner that you will be remembered so it's like it's not what you do for people it's how you make them feel because mm. they're going to forget what you look like I mean, they're going to forget I might, I might die tomorrow but that yeah. brings me into the next thing which is the, the basketball academy i'm running but i might die tomorrow but some of those kids are going to remember me forever based on the principles and the, and the things that I'm teaching them that I didn't receive when I was a child. Right. The correct guidance and, and stuff like that. So, and that's the impact you want to have? 100%. Where does that... And, and that has nothing to do with money. Like I could win Tats Lotto today, I'd still do what I'm doing and, and build towards what I see and what I feel is right. And that's new foundation for kids. You, you don't know what kind of background some of these kids come from. Or like I said, one day I was a kid who had a dream to play in the NBA or in the NBL or whatever else, and that never happened. But um, there's reasons as to why. And you never know which other kid out there is chasing a dream or, or has a vision that they might never accomplish because of their surroundings or circumstances. But you can facilitate that. I can now. And that's what you're doing? 100%. How many kids do you coach? Like, what's the... What's I, the to, if I'm being completely honest, I've never counted. I've never counted a head. Never counted a head. Just doesn't matter to you? It doesn't matter in the slightest. Mm. It doesn't matter. I don't look at them any, at any of them as a transaction. I don't look at any of them as a figure. I don't look at any of the, the parents of the kids that I coach as a business transaction. I genuinely love every single person that I'm associated to when it comes to coaching. Are you aware of how rare that is, though? Um, this is me being completely transparent. I can't run away from this situation. Yeah. I'm yeah. fully aware and conscious of what I'm saying. Um, and that's what I mean with, with the fast. The main thing I've learned is I've been exposed to who I am and not who I was pretending to be. And that's the most amazing part of the 30-day fast. So who are you pretending to be? Everything that I wanted or everything that I thought that was cool. Like? everything the world paints or, or wants you to be like like that cool guy 
yeah. get girls, yeah. act like you're this, act like you're that, yeah. when realistically it's you're broke and yeah. you've got shit for fucking brains yeah. and you've got bad character mm. and you lack discipline mm. and you lack integrity. When did you feel that about yourself though? I mean, we can get into that right now. I've got a journal here that um, from... Please. From 2012. So I was 22 wow. in 2012. So I'm happy to go through what... what so in reflection, so 2012 was maybe four years out from me um, recovering through um, drug abuse and alcohol abuse. Mm. Um, I went through a period between the ages of 17 and, and 22 where I really hit rock bottom. So um, I started journaling after I got out of that. Um, didn't see a psychologist. I didn't see um, you know, th any therapist or anything like that. I sort of developed myself through the process. And I think that's why I'm in a position now where I can give back so much is because I did it myself. I didn't, I, I, too, I had too much pride to ask for help with yeah. the things that I went through as a kid. So for me, it was like, how can I get this on myself? That's pretty I, honest of you to say you yeah, had too much pride. That's pretty, pretty common, huge, do you think? Man. Like this, this fast has really, really broken me down to my core, which I'm really, really grateful for. But if you go back, like... There's a lot of triggers that people go to for drug addiction and alcohol and, and I'm happy to, like, if I, if I can just communicate what I thought about myself, please. then it's easier to sort of, it's much easier to dive into mm -hmm. what, who, when, where, why, how. And I think that's the most important part about this podcast is, I was saying to Alex before it started, is a lot of people want to look good on social media. Mm. A lot of people want to post what car they bought or how much money they're making or posting pictures of their body. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. Yet, how many people are out there actually communicating that they're a piece of shit or that they have bad character or that they're dumb or that they're not actually smart or that they have gone through this and that? You know what I mean? Everyone's in, in denial in a sense. And I think that's the main thing through the fast is I've sacrificed something which the average person would never sacrifice and that's food on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think that's a huge accomplishment and achievement on, on my behalf. And it's not about big noting myself. I truly wanted to change. I truly wanted to, um, to figure out who I was through this. And a lot of that soul searching has actually come to fruition. So It sounds like a pretty resourceful 100%. 30 days. And it's self-analysis, self self-assessment. Like I'm doing this to myself. Nobody's doing it to me. Yeah. So yeah. That, your choice. That, that's the most empowering Part yeah, when you can make a committed, disciplined action towards a set of goals to transform which yourself. Which I never had because the purpose wasn't bigger than myself and I was self-centered. Yeah. And it's like That's if, well if you do it on behalf of something greater than yourself, then that greater thing that you're doing it on behalf of gives back to you. Right. So from a universal standpoint, um, you receive everything in abundance. Right. Just by switching the intention intentions are everything mm. and i didn't realize the magnitude and power of intent until i've gone through this and it's like wow i can't believe i've been able to break myself down to zero consciously through doing it for a greater purpose let's take a read of that diary i mean it's pretty confronting a lot of people probably <laughs> people aren't going to be this transparent about themselves and take all the hits you know what i mean it's like i've copped so many l's in my life that me communicating how I used to think about myself is, is, is a dub. Like that, that's a win for me now, you know what I mean? Whereas before I was in a, in a pretty dark place and this isn't even the dark place. This was me working, Coming through, out. working through that darkness. And yeah. that, that was eight years ago. And I still had my battles all the way through. So yeah, I'm happy to, um, to go through it. So this is um, 2012. 2012, 7th of the 6th, 2012 is when I first, first wrote this. And this was all off the top of my head. So this was a self-evaluation, self-assessment, um, me genuinely taking a look at who I was at 22 and just being ruthlessly fucking honest with where I was at. So, yeah, I'm happy to... If, you, if you're brave enough. And it's fucking, man, I, respect no, to you. There's no bravery. No, though. It's but like, it's I've your let, soul in there, man. man. I've let go, though. I've let go of that shit because there's, there's a new version of myself that's... So that's not even you in there. That's, uh, that's this like is, this old... Is, I, I can look at this and it's like, it's like, oh, yeah, cool. But it's like everything that's written down here there's also a polar opposite. What and it's mean? like nothing in the world exists without its opposite. Yeah, yin and yang. So it's like all these negatives, I gotta be the opposite. I've just gotta believe it. Okay. So it's like everyone's got it inside them. Everyone's got good, everyone's got yes. bad, everyone's got positive, everyone's yep. got negative. That's that's the whole concept of yin and yang. So if I look at my look at my first thirty years of life as an apprenticeship, 
I'm ready to serve the world. They say that there's a quote that um, the line between good and evil runs between every human heart. And there's no denial in that. I love that quote so much because like people want to paint a picture like human beings are inherently good or inherently evil, but we to are. Be honest, to be honest, I, I don't even believe in in good and evil. Like I believe in being guided and misguided. Okay. And it's yeah. like, is this is any person in prison a bad person because of what they've done? To me, I knew it might be, yet God forgives. So how I see it is man judges man, God judges man's heart. So you can't tell me that any person that's done anything bad in their life has a bad heart. Their actions might not show that they're a good person, but there's certain things that, that come to play in there. And nothing's justifiable of bad things or, or what's perceived to be um, bad things or evil things. It's just like somewhere along the way, somewhere along the, the way someone's been misled. Someone's been As misled. As you were. 100%. 100%. And now we have this. Let's go into it. The, the path of being misled. Let's see how we go. Uh, I can only do better when my awareness grows. My perception is influenced by my current awareness. My current situation is, an, is a result of me not being able to accept my current situation. Key to change is accepting others' behaviors without trying to fix them. Mm. Love yourself. Understand yourself. If you wish to love and accept others. I resist what I want to believe. I may not like the reality of situations, yet I must accept them in the present moment to react the right way. I'm resentful of people who don't live up to my values. Instead of focusing on myself and beating myself, I'm focusing on trying to compete and beat others. Competition is imitation. I copy and compare and seek validation. I do anything for praise, which makes me addicted to approval. Then I blame myself for results I didn't achieve. My problems are a reflection of self-acceptance. I've accepted value systems from others instead of my own. Guilt and unworthiness. I blame and I complain. I put others down. I find fault in others. The faults I don't like in myself, I point out, in, point out in others. I accept advice and opinions from people who are not even qualified to do so. No one can hurt you or make you angry if you are self-reliant and do not lean on others. I do things for attention and not for self-growth or development toward my destiny. I seek other people's approval, inability to forgive, scared to make mistakes, issues with uncertainty, dedication, looking at women as objects, judging myself, judging people, always seeking approval, totally dependent on others, bravery is the opposite of conformity. I do not understand my machine, body, mind and soul. I feel like a bird locked in a cage. I am vain and rely on materials to make me feel good. I am not patient, I am dependent on others, I am not self-reliant. I accept God. I expect God to do for me what I'm too lazy to do for myself. I'm influenced by exterior beliefs instead of internal knowing. I look up to others as superiors. I allow others to be responsible for my happiness. I blame others when they don't live up to my standards. I am irrational. I don't challenge my beliefs. I'm immature. I'm unrealistic. I'm pessimistic. Always wanting to be right. I don't understand my intuition. I don't love myself. I don't listen to others. And if I do, I believe everything they say. I'm unorganized, I'm a glutton, I'm greedy, I'm a spendthrift. Inability to save money, I don't trust people. I pretend I'm living my dream instead of taking the steps to live it. Being constructed of my past instead of reconstructing myself and my future. Interior destruction, exterior influence. Constantly seeking or asking for advice from the wrong people. Lying to myself to protect my beliefs. I build walls to not allow truth in. Always think I have the answers not understanding roots of my problems. My wishful thinking distorts my reality. I reject others' truths because of my current level of education. I make excuses. I do not believe in myself. I reject truth that go against my own beliefs. So that's, uh, that's what I wrote to myself in, when, when was it? what did I say? 2012. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's eight years ago. So it's like I was on the path of development at 22, but I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. And that's me be, being completely honest. So it's like that's self-reflection at 22. Now, if you have a look at most 22-year-olds, they're still partying and drinking. Mm. Like, I grew up real fast. I grew up real fast. So that self-reflection at 22, I feel like I missed out on, on childhood. On ch Okay. And childhood is <sighs> different to that? everybody. Childhood is different to everybody. I guess what I was exposed to at a young age, it wasn't, wasn't considered normal. 
In what way? Like, I mean, you don't even have to get into details, but are we talking I mean, like- I mean, I'm cool with details. You are? Like, it's transparency, man. It's okay. like, you don't know what someone else is going through. And, and that's what I mean by, like, I've, I've made the decision to follow Jesus, Jesus Christ. And that has nothing to do with religion. For me, it's about using my life as an opportunity to give back to others. Goods, bads, positives, negatives. And it's like, if I can share what I went through and be able to break down why I went through certain things, and that's me figuring myself out, um, who knows who can utilize this information to help themselves. Right. I think that's what's so powerful about being honestly transparent. And it's why I wanted to get the first podcast with Christian, which you may or may not have seen. But if you haven't, it's opening up about things like that, yeah. that people need to express, yeah. giving the opportunity and platform to talk about those darker moments. And so just a minute ago, you mentioned before you went on that, that uh, little thing you just said, the past of where you were, like what, before that, where were you? How did you get to that point? To start focusing on development? Yeah. Darkness, man. What was that? What was darkness? Like, is it abuse? Is it dependency uh, in, on drugs? As, as a child, as a child, 100% abuse, uh, neglect, mm. uh, not understanding what was going on around me. Like, that's what I mean by the normality. And it's sort of like, you've got, you've got a life that you're living at home and then you go to school and it's like, oh, mum and dad's dropping the kids off or mum and dad's got a BMW or this kid went on a holiday and it's like you start to compare yourself and then it's like you start putting in your head that you're not fucking normal and it's like what's normal these days so you start living in a distorted world internally yet externally you can't express it because of other people's judgment and um, I learned early at school you can't talk to teachers about personal problems because they don't allow personal relationships in school environments right you so tried that like talking to teachers yeah I, was, I think I was m more so fearful of the repercussions. And it's like, even nowadays, I look as a coach, like as a coach, I, I love my job. And I want to be more to, the, more, to, more to these kids than just a coach. Mm. Because I figured out that some of these kids need that. And why I'm able to say that is because I needed that, yet I had nobody there to assist me with what I was going through as a kid. You trying to be the person you wish you had? 100%. And I realize how powerful that is because I realize how much greatness exists within me and the value that exists within me. Yet to find that I had to go through tremendous suffering. Tremendous suffering. When you were through adolescence? All the way through, up until maybe five years ago where I started to figure everything out. But I think it's, look, when people say like, I've had someone die, I've had this terrible event happen to me. I'm at a point where, where I, I don't want to say I'm sorry because I think it's good. 100% And like, that's, where, that's where the gratitude comes in. It's like when you self-reflect and you can assess yourself like that, it's like, all right, what could I learn from that situation? Yeah. Like what, what was, whether you call it God or someone else might, might call it the bloody laptop. Like what, what's, it, uh, what's it trying to teach me here? And it's like if you go a little bit deeper there, there's a massive uh, spiritual component of self-development. If you start to see things as light, as light and darkness or you start to see things... Um, as a lesson, then there's plenty to learn out of that. It just comes down to perspective and how yeah, you—that's the word. How you uh, look at things, right? How did you how did you shift that perspective for yourself then? Was it uh, gradual or was so, it like so, an event? So this is like we'll go back to obviously what I went through as a kid. I got no issues talk, talking about that stuff. Please. I think it's uh, it's a massive step forward in my growth, mm. growth, and and definitely could potentially help someone else. But for me, I actually had a mentor. Um, and he taught me how to meditate. Um, he taught me a lot about personal and spiritual development. Um, I, I learned a lot about perspective based on meditation. Now, with meditation, it's all about going higher up. And the higher up you go, the better the perspective. Mm. So I don't know, that, that's the kind of conversation I probably won't go into, that's more personal. Um, in regards to the, the depth of the meditations and, and, and stuff like that as well. Um, but to simplify it, if you stand at the top of the build, top of a building, you can see a lot more around you than you can from the bottom. Mm. It's the same thing with meditation. If you go up, by the time you come back down, you're able to see a lot more than, Perspective. What, you, than what you could before. So we're talking about dimensions. Um, we're stuck in 
a two-dimensional world, yet mm. we're multifaceted when it comes to um, what we're capable of. Right. That's, that's a great point. It's just one of those things. It's like it's uh, you, you sort of got to... You got to do it, number oh, one. It's not about do it. It's more so... That well, you got to meditate. You got to get to that People, point. Like uh, meditation and mindfulness are two different things. Like you, there's work to be done. There's work to be done, man. Like we're, we've got no idea. How do you distinguish the two? Is mindfulness, mindfulness more a state to be in I permanently? Think it's, yeah, like, like peace of mind, being calm, yep. clarity, all those things. That's all a part of it. Yet when you talk about meditation, like there's work to be done. Mm. Internal work. Yes, there's things to move through. Internal like work. Pain. And, and nobody can do that for you. You mm. really got to go deep inside yourself and say, hey, look at this, look at that. Like you take a look at yourself which changes and alters your perspective on everything around you. Absolutely everything. I think it's such a great tool. And are it we jumping from like thing to thing or are we good? Like, is this like flowing or? This is it, man. This is yeah. just a comfort. It's what happens yeah. because like you'll say if something. You ever want, if you want to pull me up on anything, just pull me up on it because I don't want to lose traction. And then it's like, you know what I mean? I, I sort of want, want it to make sense to be like, I don't want it to be. No, bro, it's, it's, it's yeah. all good. But it just, just, it's a conversation. Like, so if you say something like that's going to spark, yeah. I'm going to ask. And All then conversations are tangents. Yeah. Chuck that mic though a little bit to where I'm leaning. Yes, yes. We're you got to lean. We're good. Um, where was that? Meditation. Mm -hmm. um, because like it's going to be tough to have. All right, it. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking yeah. about my mentor. Yeah. So how, how, when, when did you meet this guy? 2012. Like when you were 22? Mm, yeah, I, th I reckon I was about 23. Okay. Yeah, so I uh, met him. Um, that, that's where I was basically at. So it's like we, we dove into a lot of, um, he'd, he'd show me stuff that probably you couldn't find in a book. Like what? Uh, we'll, we'll leave that. We'll leave that for another ah, okay. coffee and tea moment. Got but it's, like, it's more so like just, just exposing me to different ways of thinking, just yeah. helping me be more open-minded. And it's like just asking me questions more so, more so than telling me. Yeah. You know what I mean? It wouldn't stick a book in front of me and say, go read this. It would ask me questions, which opened up my mind. So it was basically unlocking my potential in a way, just by asking me questions without trying to be someone to tell me what to do. Mm. Um, I was someone that was very rebellious. I, I don't like listening to people. I still don't like listening to people. Um, if I, and that comes down to trust. Um, trust was broken at an early age. So me trusting people doesn't exist probably still doesn't even to now? a certain standpoint i think the one thing that i've improved on if you carry an asset that i'd like to acquire and i'm not talking material mm. i talk asset is in strength i talk assets in regards to integrity i talk assets in regards to if there's something that i want to learn from you then i'll listen to you i only want the best for myself now so i'm not willing to settle for anything less than that which means if I, I'm not here to judge people, I'm here to assess. Now I've been super self-critical of myself. I'm able to break myself down, which means it makes me 10 times more confident to break down my surroundings. Do you know what I mean? So I don't make judgments, I make assessments now. And if I see that you're someone that I wanna learn from and ultimately someone that I respect or someone that I admire based on your characteristics or qualities, I will 110% listen. Mm. Whereas I'm less inclined to listen to someone who's learnt from a book or um, someone who's gone to university and studied a text that somebody else has created as opposed to self-discovery and uh, um, what's the right word? Experience. Mm. And I think life is the greatest teacher. Something that a book can't teach you is your own life and, and what's happening to you. So pretty stubborn in that sense. But um, I'm very open to learning now. Very open learning from the uh, from the right people, as you should be, because from the, the right people, the circle you keep, determine and create your character and mold your character and your habits. My character was completely broken. Like I, when I say I didn't know who I was, it's like my mum raised me correctly, and I can say that she loved us. We didn't have much growing up. She raised me correctly. But? So the right, uh, no, I don't. There's no but. Huh. I, I was raised correctly. Um, correct values, correct morals, correct virtues. There's no but. Things just changed when you experienced pain and didn't understand it. Where did that, did the pain come from your mother's side? Was your father in, was your father in your uh, life? My old man, 
he's not in my life hasn't been in my life since i was a child mm. um very violent person alcoholic so i experience things at an early age that most kids uh most kids shouldn't mm. so being exposed to that is i had my trust broken at a very early very early age and i think my perception on love and what family was was altered dramatically due to that so that's what i mean it's like you have a dream yet sometimes you don't really know what the fuck's happening to you so as a kid as 100 yeah and man. that's what i mean by the perception of what's real and what's what's real it's like shit what's real to me is completely different to somebody else it's good though because through that it's almost like it's a weird thing to say i'm aware of what i'm about to say is pretty it's, it's, it's like a bit of a Sorry strange sloping, thing by the way if it's uh <laughs> fuck em. i don't fuck fuck them with all due res- with all due respect like <laughs> it's not about no no i hear that yeah um i think like, i'm gonna get on for tangent i want to focus on what i was about to say um your father oh yeah uh uh like we'll, we'll reword that which part uh, call him dad okay like my beliefs, ah. my beliefs on father are totally different. Yes, and, and the father is honest, something different. My, like my, we all have one father. Yeah, we've got dads, but we've got one father. I understand and what you're I saying. And I believe that the 30 years of neglect has taught me everything a dad can't, and everything a father should. That's what I'm saying. And so, the kids who grow up within the worst scenarios, even worse than yourself, abuse, rape. Um, low socioeconomic um, ghettos of, of of all around the world. A lot of people don't make it out, and it's it's a shame. But 100%. the ones who do, they're unbeatable uh, mentally. That, and, and that's that that brings me to this point: is like a lot of like you got to be careful with, with what you say because you never know how. I know how how dark I was. I know I attempted suicide. I've been in hospital for that. Um, like I've been there. And I guess my, my mindset and perspective has shifted on anxiety and depression because I have overcome it. My mindset has shifted. On How has it. it shifted? What it was perceived to be before was I had no way out. Yeah. Yet I knew that there was light inside me. I just didn't understand what that light was. And, and the thing that's blinking inside you saying, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. There's a reason why some people keep going. And there is a light inside all that darkness. You've got to find that light. And once you find it, you need to learn what it is. And that's the most important part. And my perspective has shifted on anxiety and depression because I have been healed through the spirit. And that's the thing that gets distorted with religion. It's like, I can't, ex- like as dark as I was, as dark as I was, I'm very grateful and blessed to be a, to to have gone through that. Yet what I have found now, I wish everybody had. Mm. I wish I could share this with the world. But they need to earn it themselves. Hundred percent, and it's it's a journey. Yeah, and one hundred percent, some people don't make it through. I think last year we counted six or seven deaths with with friends that I knew. Really, six or seven suicides. Oh. You need that many. Seven six or seven suicides what was the demographic or was it every all over the place um as like this might come across as heartless yet i'll be completely transparent and honest um i didn't go to any of their funerals why were they not close enough to you because they, they were close enough to go to their funeral as in mutual respect um as as far as friendship on a depth level there wasn't depth there how how i've changed and shifted my thinking is people are going to keep dying of course they're going to keep dying yes and it's like i figured out that this is more important what is self-development and developing yourself to be able to implement what the world needs to create and inspire change and until i do that for myself i can go to ten thousand funerals a year it's not going to change those people dying The funeral, though, seems to be an opportunity for a lot of things. To mourn, to pay respect, to be there for people. They don't die. People don't die. Can I give you a quote that I like? People say you die twice. When your physical body leaves the world and when the last person remembers you. 100%. Do people it's, still die then? It's, 
like I don't believe they do a part of you still exists and and that's the thing is it's like man I, I, like I don't understand how people say God doesn't exist it's like who created this table Alex that was created from somewhere and if 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 we think that there's nothing inside us that creates things and we think that's we're dependent and reliant on ourselves to create that's a pretty self-centered thing to believe i get it it can it does sound ag- arrogant doesn't it 110 percent, and that's what i mean like how can we walk past an ant every single day that's this big and step on them and not think that there's something above us that can step on us at any moment i like that and and i genuinely mean that and if you have a look at how ants operate and it's like this is real this is this is how my mind works so ants have colonies and ants work tires tirelessly for the queen are you hearing what i'm saying so they're building these things and you don't know what the fuck their purpose is yet you see them grinding and it's like they walk out they talk <laughs> they fuck off they walk they exchange something they fuck off and if you're telling me that we're not doing that on a higher scale for something else like i don't know that just doesn't sit right with me like that that's borderline stupidity so there is some whether it's realized or not there is some higher purpose that we are fulfilling with every action 100 percent. now i got no idea what that is i'm not even going to try to pretend i know what it is i'm not even going to try to research to know what it is all i know is all i can do is keep developing myself to be the best version of myself in god in god's image and that's not allocated or directed towards a religion the best version of myself and live in his light to be able to give back to other people as much as i can to improve and enhance their life and their well-being okay i I think that's really important you said that because you said without a religion without associating yourself with a team but at the same time you did say you believe and follow Jesus Christ, which is associated with Christianity. How do you disassociate or associate those two then? Because that, Jesus Christ, he comes from that denomination. Why even give him a name? Why not just call it God? Call it God, if you'd like to call it God. It's more so like, how do I explain this? So religion teaches that we leave earth and enter heaven. The kingdom teaches that you bring heaven to earth. Mm. So there's a big difference there. So the concept of Jesus Christ changes based on who's teaching it. Now, are you learning from a kingdom perspective where you're bringing heaven to earth and making a benefit or... Um, bringing wealth or value to somebody else's life or are you just being a good person so you can wait to die and then go to heaven right like this is heaven yeah and this, this is, is hell like which one do you want it to be who do you want to be in it and that's something that i never understood so it's like you've got that yin and yang you've got the light and darkness you've got the positive and negative on earth at the end of the day it is about metaphysics and magnetics so you can either be a positive person or a negative person positive people create and inspire change um they bring value whereas a negative person devalues so you got to understand how the whole energetic component works as well then there's so many people out there who are will almost use their poor carrot juice is the first time i've had carrot juice i don't don't like it at all (laughs) don't drink it then have your little orange (laughs) finished done yeah. you can have the one you gave me if you want mm, no it's all good you don't like it no i'm just uh <laughs> i've done eat, i'm done consuming calories for the yeah. day so i'll just have a little bit here and there uh there are people who will excuse their poor behavior um for the fact that or they will do good behavior for the reason to go to heaven or they'll point at other people 100%. and say you're doing that you're going to go to hell 100%. which in a way seems to somewhat contradict that philosophy do you wish more people had that philosophy that heaven and hell is right here i don't wish that upon anyone all i can communicate is what's worked for me and it's like it it just comes down to if i can create something that inspires people then i think i've done pretty well Mm. if i fail at it i'm going to keep working at it till i do create something that can inspire people and encourage people who are once in my situation so there's a there's a selfish component to it and there's a giving component to it and that's the that's i think where you differentiate purpose and just living for the sake of living 
it's like I feel like I've found my purpose um, I wouldn't say I know exactly what I want to achieve or accomplish yet but the vision's definitely there and things are definitely coming into fruition and it also changes 100% it molds and changes to opportunities and as your life expands and changes and the thing is and I've said this before it's okay to want to do multiple things and then for that to change over your lifetime. 100%. You might be a basketball coach now. I, I think master is a totally different ball game. Like they've got that, what's that saying? Um, jack of all trades, master of none. Like to focus all your energy on a task for a lifetime, that's a whole different ball game. But then... That's a whole different that's ball That's fine. Game. And there's nothing wrong with what people choose to do. Yeah. But it's like mastering who you are and mastering your energy is so empowering and it's probably the hardest thing you'll ever do in your fucking right. life so it's like you got energy going here and going there and going to parents and going to grandparents and going to kids and then going to university and it's like your energy is just distributed all over the place when we haven't been taught to channel towards the one thing that we love now how many people are doing what they love you tell me how many people you I, think I can't put a number on it I can guarantee it's not many yeah but I try and only associate with people who are yeah because you become the people around you. 100%. So I can't, no disrespect, I, don't, I can't, it's, I can't afford to associate with losers. 100%. With all due respect. What's the definition of a loser? Though? That's a loose term. Mm. No, but hey, I'm a fucking loser. I'm a loser until I'm consistently winning. And I'm still taking L's in my life. So I can put my hand up and say, hey, I'm a loser. Yet as a loser, I'm still doing a lot better than some other people, yet there shouldn't be a comparison. So it's like when I'm constantly winning, there's still going to be losses, yet I'll call myself a loser because it inspires me to be a winner. Right. And it's like I constantly do that. I constantly do that. I self-reflect and it's like I'll keep reading these things to myself that I wrote from 2012. And it's like that shit really inspires me. It's like, oh yeah, I thought about that for myself. Let's see if I can prove it over here. And it's like not proving to other people, proving to myself and it's like I'll constantly level up constantly level up and there might be small wins but they add up of course they do and Over then a success lifetime. what's perceived to be success to everybody is completely different but it's like hey I'm getting W's here and no one else knows and that's really fulfilling really fulfilling and you start to build this sort of positive momentum and living in a positive place is something that I've never experienced so it's something that I'm really 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 grateful for really grateful for so then to clarify I think the difference between a loser and a winner, to more, to more accurately put it, is the difference between someone aiming upward or aiming downward. Yeah. Okay, down. their intent. Yeah. Whether they're aiming up towards good or down towards the opposite. 100%. But everybody's redeemable. There is potential in everybody. And so I or anyone should never cast anybody out completely. 100%. That, that would be... Never kick a man while he's down. Right. Yeah. You never know. Because if they get up, if that same person you uh, you kick down, you don't know what position. So it's a, it's a quote that I read recently. Let it, let it come to me. Um, be, f be careful who you kill in the flesh because you don't know their ranking in the spirit. Like that hit me so deeply that I carry that with me now. And it's like, when I look at you or I look at the next person, like they might not know who they are now, but when they find out, mm. you don't know who they're gonna be to you. And, and that's what I mean by the whole concept of God is, is really fascinating to me. Because it's like, if, if I didn't unlock this through the fast with the purpose to get closer to God and with the purpose to um, see how disciplined I am, I wouldn't be talking like this in front of you right now. I'd still be a shadow of my old self walking around with my mouth closed because I was too scared to talk about what I was going through. So it's like, if I've unlocked this, how many other people can unlock the right. same thing? Right. And the more people, the better because there are so many people who are stuck. They just get stuck, man. 100%. But it's business at the end of the day. What do you mean? The dumber you are, the more mistakes you make, the more people can capitalize on you. Hmm. Isn't that business? It's business for the hucksters. There you go. The people and that's trans. something I'm learning as well. Is like there's a, this new age generation that's getting getting the right information. Um, they're building things that are unbelievable. 
Like you, you look at Tesla, you look at some of these things. I popping Elon up. too, yeah. You, know, you see some of these things popping up, and it's like you wonder why old establishments are breaking and, and crumbling. And mm. like good, I fucking love it. Bring the chaos. They're, they're not built on the right foundations, and it, and the right foundations is you before me. That's the right foundation. Whereas usually, it's me, 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 my money, my pocket, um, my house, my car. It's like man, we can both get it if we work together. Yeah. Yet there's no trust involved, so. When it comes to that sort of stuff, it doesn't work out. You know Have you heard I mean? of the concept zero sum game? A zero sum game? No. So it's basically it's it's kind of this famine mentality that a lot of people have. Where imagine a pie, yep. the pie's got a hundred pieces, and you're in an industry or whatever it is, and you think that there are only a hundred pieces to get. There's like only a hundred mm-hmm. customers, and you have to take as many as possible, and there will there will be no more after that. Yeah. It's this famine idea that there's only a limited number of opportunities and people, and I think that's. T- coming to what you're saying like this famine zero-sum mentality of like i have to take as much as possible because I, you know, there's going to you know be nothing why, else you know why i don't believe that yeah yeah because everything you need exists in the kingdom and it's like if you believe that you're living your life in abundance like if you win hey man yeah hey like we all win you win tats lotto tomorrow tell me how you did it mm. not give me your money tell me how you did it mm. like th- that's my perspective now so it's like that's living in abundance you win i win too I want you to win. I want the next person to win. And mm-hmm. that's what I mean by your perspective shifts when you know who you are in something higher than yourself. I truly believe that. And that's what you said before. You I got no hate. Like if you look at, so people talk about the competition, like in the industry, the competition. There's no fucking competition. I said in here, I used to compete against others. Yeah. I used to look at myself and be like, I want to beat that person. I'm only beating myself up with that mentality. I can't outcompete you when I'm trying to beat you. The best version of myself is better than what I'm trying to compete against. Oh, yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like anything yeah. external I don't care about anymore. I'm not hating on a trainer over there or a coach over here or somebody on the other side of town. Like I really don't care what everybody else is doing. I wish them success from the bottom and deepest part of my heart. I wish them absolute success. I wish them millions of dollars. I wish them many successful clients. I wish them contacts all over the world to get whatever the hell they want. I'm gonna keep chipping away slowly. I'm gonna keep chipping away slowly. One day at a time. One day at a time, the right way, the right way. Yeah, I remember you talking about that, the right way. When we had those conversations in the past, it's like. And that's what I mean by not counting heads. like. When I say I love my clients, I love my clients. It's like, I want to see what kind of impact I can have you to make you the best version of yourself. And it's like, if I can do that, I'm successful. Now, if we create something out of that, we're both winning. Now I want your families to win. Now I want your siblings to win. Now I want your friends to win. Mm. Now that's the difference between a winner or a loser. You can't win by yourself. Mm about creating winners around you yeah it's well, well said yeah i think people think that uh, this idea that if uh yeah like like the zero-sum game like if if i i have to win if you win then i don't win or i get less of a win but that's loser's mentality yeah it's not true but it's the famine mentality it's the crabs in a bucket mentality you're trying to pull the guy out who's trying um, to get I, out like someone i looked up to when i was younger was tupac and yeah it's like if you listen to some of the stuff he said that shit's, that shit's like, I, I listen, I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> we need more of this guy, but there's only, there's only some of those guys that exist. That's not in everybody, you know what I mean? It's like, that level of greatness is, is totally different. It's like, I, I want to find that depth. Like, that, yeah. that, that's, what, that's what I'm working towards. So I want to find the core of who I am and be able to express that in, in multiple different ways to be able to touch people. Mm. So I use Kobe Bryant as an example. It's probably one of my biggest inspirations. How did you feel when uh, you heard about that? Um, I went quiet for four days mm. and I really sat there and, and sat in that feeling. And it's like, it's strange that somebody like that can have such a big impact on your life and for you not to know them from a physical yeah. standpoint, yeah. but from a spiritual standpoint. It's like during this time when I was going through all that shit, he saved my life. Wow. And for that, I'll be forever grateful. So it's like you carry a piece of him with everything that you do and everything that you teach. And I do that because he inspired me out of something like this. That's beautiful. 
yeah and he had that impact on so many and that's it also goes back to what we said about um jack of all trades master of none like some people have talent some people have a different path you know it's a bit easier than other people but yet to master your, your craft that's like that's like the ultimate accomplishment it's like not everybody gets to do that we might never reach the heights of some of these other people and it's not about comparison but it's like it's definitely inspiring but i think what's number one is what you said before master yourself be the master of your own kingdom yeah right and because at the end of the day i used to think that i had to pick one thing and that's it that the, that idea was sold to me i must pick one thing and only do that but then i looked at other people around me other big influential people that inspired me i look at leonardo da vinci who are your top five top, top five, five what in in people that you looked up to and it's like because uh, i've seen you've done the whole 48 laws of power thing and you've dissected mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. dissectable dissected Bro, i was all a that. baby when i did that yeah. I, 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 that's the thing it's like you had that you had that push or that drive to go a little bit deeper yeah. to to do more and yeah. it's like I, I think that shit's amazing yeah and it's like Appreciate I, mean, it. I don't know whether a lot of people have actually seen that th- those videos or not but it's like you've built the, the podcast now but this all led from somewhere and yes. it's like you've been dabbling in that development for a while oh man it's like to someone else the stuff you were doing they're probably like oh yeah, what, this guy's weird what the hell is he doing that's what they, that's what i got but i yeah. look at it and it's like i'm rocking with you <laughs> <laughs> i'm rocking with you man but that's the thing like because i'm a site like i'm 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 like one of those guys it's like i'm real quiet you're a silent observer silent observer. you see like, though I'm you know quiet, i'm quiet and it's like people are probably like oh he's arrogant or he's cocky and it's like i'm really not if I've got your back, I've got your back. Yeah. And you're going to know about that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, if, like I said, if I see that you, you're a good dude, if I see that you're trying to, trying to do right, like, we'll link eventually. Yeah. We'll link eventually. It's just a matter of time. Right time. And now we're right here. Right place, 100%. <laughs> now we're here. But yeah, I, I definitely had a look at that earlier when I, when I first met you. And it's like, um, okay. what were you, I think... It was how to win friends and Amazon's people. It was then twelve rules for life. Yeah, I basically. I what just did you do? Was that like a voiceover, or were you actually was that, was that your own? Like you dissected what you read in your own words. Like what did you both? Do? So basically, I read the book. I read these books. Uh, for those who don't know, just look at my YouTube and you'll see exactly what we're talking about. Check I, that out. I, I read these books and they were incredibly influential to me, especially Forty Eight Laws of Power. It kind of opened up a world. Have you read it? Do you want me to be honest with you? I picked up, picked up the 48 Laws of Power and I read maybe two pages and I didn't like the energy I felt from it. I can understand that. So I put it down and I haven't picked it up since. I made a video about that. Is the 48 exactly Laws of Power evil and malevolent and that? Just I, talking I just, about that stuff. I just felt like when... So here's the thing, yeah? So every single... This is what I believe and someone out there correct me if I'm wrong. Like call me out on this shit. I believe that every success book that has ever been written was created based on the principles and foundations of the Bible. Now, when I picked, so when you read the word, when you talk about the Proverbs, when you talk about Psalms, you feel empowered. Yeah. When I picked up the 48 laws of power, I didn't feel good about what I was reading. So I put the book down. And that's why I think you should read it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I can understand why you would put that down. But I think that's what reason why you should Maybe read it. Maybe that might be an issue with me. Who yes, knows? because it reveals a reality think, about human nature. The, I think it was a power thing. And it's like, maybe, yeah. maybe that's what jumped It has a stigma. Like 100%. Right? It, the, uh, the book has this stigma of manipulation around it. I've got, uh, yeah, and I just got that thing. It's like, I don't like, like that feeling. And it's like, I don't, I don't like the feeling of dominating It's somebody. dirty. I, it, it does. It feels dirty. Like, yeah. I don't like that. The thought process of domination like i think our, our governments do that enough yeah like, there's too much of that in the world yep. and it's like I, I don't feel a need or want to dominate people do you know what i mean so i think that's that's the kind of vibe that i got from that book and that's why i put it down but yeah i speak on it if you can enlighten me that'd be dope i made a video about it if you ever see it i've i just that's 15 minutes of me explaining about this but to touch on it briefly here what i took from that book and why i dive so deeply in it is because I was a young, impressionable, immature, like weak human. And I was getting played. Weak, weak in what sense? I think soft. Mm-hmm. Meaning. What's your definition of soft though? 
I think I had discipline. I, li- I like to dissect things, so it's like the same way you're communicating. Yeah. I want to do the same thing right. with you because I find that shit really intriguing. Like, it's what's important. What's your definition of soft? Like, I'd, I'd say I'm still soft. Like from a, right. from, same. A, from a business standpoint, I'd say I'm soft as shit. Right. Right. But I if, can say that. If we were to go toe to toe in a workout or in a sprint or in a, like, you will not beat me. That's <laughs> that's that's my mentality because I think because the stuff that I went through when I was younger built that. Mm. But I think it's I'm soft when it comes to things that I don't understand. Mm. So it's like business and build. So I'd love to know what what you mean by soft. <sighs> I, I actually love I actually love talking shit to myself now about my weaknesses. Yeah. And I was in denial before, whereas now I actually I enjoy it. Hey man, you're a fucking pussy. You're hey, a piece of shit. You're soft as fuck. Yeah. Hey, you shouldn't be fucking doing that. Like that self correction now is 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 dope. I love that. Yeah. Wait, f- first of all, I was about to call your name. Ivan Ivan. Ivan. So here's the this story. This is on fucking that. news. We'll, we'll, we'll go back. Hundred we'll percent. Yeah. Like, I don't want to forget what you're saying. I don't yeah. want to take words out of your mouth. Appreciate it. But um my mum used to call me Ivan mm-hmm. when I was younger. So each time I do something bad, she would call me Ivan. And uh, my name was Ivan. So in, in school, I actually got suspended uh, once or twice because a teacher would call me Ivan and I'd flip out. Um, and it got, to a, it got to a stage where I just gave up correcting people that my name was Ivan and not Ivan. Mm-hmm. So subconsciously, what I actually did is I started telling everyone my name was I- Ivan when I was doing bad. So it came down with a little thing. So it's like if my mum heard uh, Ivan, she knows I'm not doing good. If it comes back, it's Ivan. My mum knows that I was doing good. So it's like I've, I've sort of carried that unconsciously throughout my whole life. And I've just been like, yeah, Ivan. And it's like... It's not your name. You're not doing right here. Like, what's going on? But it was unconscious. You know what I mean? So Ivan, when I'm being good. Ivan, when I'm being bad. So <laughs> I had a similar... Ex- not similar, but I had an experience with my name most of my life introducing myself as Alex. Yeah. And you called me that because that's how I introduced myself yeah. when I met you. But now, it's not a name is a name, but it's also a representation and a symbol, and it has meaning, right? And so now, uh, I never introduce myself as that. It's Alexander. Alexander is my name. That's my dad's name as well. It's a funny part. Well, they, that, how interesting, <laughs> right? You yeah. can take whatever you want from that. You know, Brit- how are you, daddy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm back, motherfucker. I'm back in your life. Reincarnation. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's my name and I feel like it represents my character more accurately, right? Yeah. But that's my own personal thing. That's dope. Let's go back. Yeah. Soft. Um, I think because I... Because when, when a person is very harsh and critical of themselves, which I think we should be, if you, if you want to stand for excellence, then I think you tell yourself things like you're soft. In reality, in comparison to a cohort, you may not be right you may be really disciplined and and strong-minded but i I have to tell if i tell myself i'm good if i tell myself i'm too good and i start believing that then i will lose that edge yeah then i start believing my own bullshit and i start tricking myself that oh wait i'm doing really good i'm i'm making it yeah yeah but it's the ego takes over yes and there's no humility behind what you're doing but it's a tough balance because it's like we need to employ gratitude and reflection to how far we've come. But at the same time, if you want to stand for excellence or something greater than yourself, you have to be self-critical. Yeah. I have to keep going. And that's the thing. I think it's an it's a internal battle. You know what I mean? And, and the thing that I, that, that's why I said before, it's like my best is better than that person's best. And it's like there's a little ego attached to that. But that's that being hypersensitive to your self-criticism. And it's like, if you actually think about it, the more self-critical you are, the more genius exists inside you. And it's like, if you can figure that out and then bring the best out of yourself, who knows what you're capable of accomplishing or achieving? Mm. So what was perceived to be negative before is actually super positive now. So it's like, hang on, something as simple as sweeping the floor. Like, you know if you have give 110% on sweeping the fucking floor or not. Majority of the time, someone that doesn't want to clean up won't leave a situation or platform spotless. But it's like if you're trying to achieve excellence, everything you do needs to be Absolutely. done at a perfect standard. And that's the thing that I'm realizing most with my academy is it's like when we sweep the floors before practice, we're in there 30 minutes early. And I want to make sure that when my kids step on the floor to train, the floor is completely clean for them to do what they need to do on. Every drill set up while they're drinking water or the next drill's already been created 
four or five drills ahead. And it's like, when it comes to that now, like I, I know I'm in a league of my own when it comes to um, the preparation side of things, when it comes to coaching and athlete development. Preparation dictates performance. 100%. And but so it's like, it was unconscious. It, it just came down to, I love these kids so much that I want them to be the best version of themselves. So I have to create the best platform to the, for them to stand on. And that's all it came down to. So it's like the better I create it, the better they're going to perform. And the better they perform, the more you can create out of that. Mm. So it's like every detail matters. Absolutely. And like you had the I, intent. I want, I want them to step on the cleanest floor possible. So when they do a jab step, that floor squeaks. Yeah. Not their foot slides. Because I've played on some fucking shit oh, courts in Australia. I know that. It and that's the worst up. thing. You can't it's like there's nothing better than walking to a clean gym that has a vibe. And it's like you put your weights back yourself because you respect the, the gym. Like, I, I love that. I love that. And that's what I want to create for my athletes. When someone steps into my gym, they know. It's, it's a high pressure environment, high pressure environment, high standards. But when they walk out, they feel like they, they got something out of it on all levels. Mm. Uh, but it just shows how much you respect the intent for what you're doing. You take it seriously. 100%. You're not. Like when I look around this room. Let's not look around this room. That's a work in progress. And that's another reason, to be completely honest with you, why we can, can I drop names? Sure. Like I love Woodford and that's why I'm with Woodford because I genuinely love and I care about Woodford, the person. Mm. Um, there's huge potential there. Yeah. And if I can be an asset to his life, I believe that I will help him accomplish and achieve what he's destined to accomplish. Mm. And that's why I'm still here. Mm. And that's why I don't like hearing negative things about um, people because I was one of those people. You'll always hear negative things that, about people though. That people perceived me to be when I knew in my heart that's not who I was. That's mm. just what the world created. So I believe, that goes back to what you said, no one's ever down and out. And it's like, I believe in the underdog. Mm. I believe Christian's a huge underdog. I'm going to back him all the way. So as far as what you see here, I understand completely. But it's like, who are we as people to make him a better version of himself? Wait, who are we as people? Say it again. Well, we have power in these situations to impact people's lives. Right. So that there, I see it. What can I do to enhance that? Right. That's how I see it. Take your responsibility. 100%. Fair enough. Yes. From my position. Agreed. From my position. Not for yours or, or... anybody else's what role can i play in this environment to make it better i think number one is be the change you want to see sure uphold the characteristics that you that have the most virtue to you 100 percent, and use to you let's go on what did you mean by that um i'm a pretty uh if you if you walk i'll give you an example if you walk in if you walked in my bedroom um everything has its place mise en place is a, is a french term that I, when I used to work in hospitality and kitchens, mm-hmm. that I learned. Can you link that to me? Which? I'd love to look into what you just said. Mise en place? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Done. Mise en place is a French term. It means everything in its place. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that is a philosophy that I try to embody in my life. Who created that? I'll tell you right now. That'd be dope. Because that's a, they're the kinds of things I want to know. So it's like, if that resonates with you, who created that and where did it come from? It's like, that's, that's what I'm trying to achieve. You want to know the origins? I, I want to put myself on on that level one day where someone can utilize what i've said to impact like you're impacting me there you go it's a two-way street uh well we know it's a french culinary phase as i said putting in place everything in place but you want to know the origins there's some references to some old books montague prosper larousse google that you want to know the origins can't say exactly it's an old kitchen term and i think it has applications to everything we do in our life yeah and so how you keep your environment matters it reflects what's happening in here in your mind and so if there's chaos around you then you cannot expect there not to be chaos in you 100 percent. and so maybe i'm a bit anal and fair enough sure you can say that and i could admit that but I think if you're going to pick one Control thing to your be... surroundings. Yeah. But that, that 100% it comes down to internal. And it's like if you're straight within yourself, external is going to be straight too, which means 
the path is a bit clearer. Yeah. There's no mess. There's no clouded judgment. Yeah. There's no um, lack of awareness. You're aware of your surroundings. Right. I think that's really powerful. Are you familiar with Jordan Peterson? No. Okay. I've heard the name. He's a clinical psychologist, Canadian psychologist. Mm-hmm. Um, he's ro- risen to popularity. I think a lot of his ideas you would resonate with. He does these le- biblical lectures yep. on YouTube, which... Biblical lectures? Yes. He... It's quite incredible. What he does is he reads the Bible or he takes parts from the Bible, he dissects it, and he pulls psychological and philosophical applications to people's lives and humanity. And based on the characters? Yes. Yeah. Yes, based on the characters. I'll, I'll send you that. And the as reasoning well. as to why, what, when, mm-hmm. who. Yeah, mm-hmm. I got you. Everything. I got you. And I ne- for me, that got I f- me... I find it funny that you referenced the Bible in that situation. And, and well, now, he did. Yeah, he did, yet he's rose to a position where he's an influence now. Yes. Where did it come from? How, did, how was he able to dissect it? And why did he choose the Bible to dissect? It's powerful stuff. You'd have to dive into watching them to see his intentions more clearly. Um, That'd be interesting. He's a very, very th- one of the one of the most incredible thinkers in modern society, modern in my society. opinion, um, in my observation. To me, you know, you talked about like who are those five people you asked before. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to. Yeah, I'd love to touch on that. So I have six nine. I've printed off 18, you, what was it, what I was doing, mm. 18 black and white photographs. I was thinking I've put on my fridge, yeah. so I was counting how many, of the men that have made me, okay? and So there's no female influence there? There is female influence in my life. There is More absolutely female dominant. influence. It is male dominant because I am a man mm-hmm. and a male. Um, but at this... Really? I- are you sure? I'm, I'm still figuring it out. You know, you know, my, uh, you never know. You might wake up one day. These days, who knows? I yeah. th- <laughs> be anything you want. Ivan, that's what they're Ivani. Te- that's what they're teaching. That's what they're teaching. I am buying that shit. Uh, I resonate. I, I, I chose only men because um, I think the masculine is something I'm, I'm tapping into more. And I think at times I have been feminized and I've lived in a feminized environment. And I think there's utility to retapping. As with in external or so external out there or is that internal mm, within family mm, being feminized? I think from the mother, from the, the, the protector mother role, yep, yep. F- forming family. And then as my character being a, more of a weaker, soft-minded person, I think that is, a, that is associated with that side. Um, and so like just, just saying that like 100% me too I'm the only boy in my family and it's like the, the blessing is having that and then learning about how to be a man I mm-hmm. think that's the biggest blessing because now you've got the ultimate component of one then you can develop yourself in what kind of man you want to be after mm-hmm. whereas if it was dominated by man earlier you wouldn't have the yeah. ability to empathize to be a man you need to learn I think I've heard Elliot Hull say to be a man you need to learn how to be a woman or something along those lines like you need to step into yeah. both roles yeah and it's very empowering man yeah very empowering i had no idea what manhood was yes like no fucking idea like, i grew up with my dad that would beat my mum and you know cuss her out and talk all all that sort of mess and it's like my perspective on that shit was fucking distorted as hell that's what you learned well, like to be a man that's what I mean that? by you don't know any different yeah. you don't know any different it's like you see it and it's like internally it's like whoa externally I had no fucking idea what manhood was or how to be a man or how to empathize and I don't necessarily blame you as well because I think our society is one that is currently set up where there is no rite of passage to become a man we're not living a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, where there were we lived in small tribes and communities where you would have rites of passage. Hundred percent. Now, can we create those? Absolutely. Are 100%. some people doing that? Absolutely. You have to find it. You have study, to create study it. Study kings. Learn what a king is. Learn his duties. Learn mm. his characteristics. Like you have the you have the ability also to create your own empire and be the king of your domain. Yes. You need to understand what a king is. What is obligations and responsibilities are and once you adopt those it gives you a different insight on what manhood is king how did you learn to become how did you learn what that meant to you 
How did you learn that? Because you grew I, up I in a house that I wasn't... Want, I wanted to learn what it was to be a man because I didn't want to recreate what I grew up in. So I yeah. had to create that. Yeah. To create that, I had to learn and I had to grow. So it's like, if if the king looks after the kingdom, I want that. I've always been a giving person. I've always been a person, whether it's my last $5 or food or whatever it is, I've always been one to give. And it's like, if I've got those qualities and characteristics, regardless of my mistakes, they're also qualities found in king. So it's like, why can't I be successful? Why can't I make more money why can't i have my own kingdom and then look after all the people who i want to look after so why not why can't i I think this is the question it's like i have kevin hart's on uh, a podcast he talking about all the things he's doing and people they shut themselves down and they they stop themselves from doing things through their own self-limiting beliefs with and all you got to ask is like why not why not why can't i Russell Westbrook, why not? <laughs> the whole world hates on the guy, but hey, why not, man? Why? I, I'm, I'm kind of disconnected from the NBA now. Yeah, why, yeah. Why is, uh, you don't watch any NBA? Nah. I don't really watch NBA either. I, I love EuroLeague basketball. Love, like when I say I love EuroLeague basketball, I'm very, since, since Kobe left the NBA, my attention to the NBA basketball, nowhere near as much That's as interesting. the Why did EuroLeague draw you, draw you in? Was it more of a pure game to you? Pure game? Team orientated basketball. Oh yeah. And if you have a look at the IQ, the game is not designed for highlights. The game is designed for high IQ basketball. Effectiveness. Now I'm not saying that the NBA is not high IQ basketball. I'm nobody to talk on that. Firstly, I'm a nobody when it comes to that. I do know my shit because I've lost I've watched a lot. I've studied a lot and I've learned from some great coaches. Um, for me, if you watch the Euro League man the way they set their picks the way they flip screens the way they um, communicate and rotate on defense like it's proper basketball the NBA is designed for you not to sit in the paint and for guys to beat guys one on one and come up with uh, highlight plays which creates more business which puts more asses on seats which is yeah put that aside but it's like if you want to watch quality basketball and coaches who are strategic in the way they um get mismatches and, and stuff like that. Like, it's ridiculous. Greg it's like Popovich, yeah. And, and that's what I mean by I don't listen to many people. And this is for viewers out there. If you want to get me to do something, I'm happy to learn and I'll put this out there. Let's talk about manifestation. I'm happy to learn from Greg Popovich. I'm happy to learn from Coach K. I am happy to learn from Jelko Obradovic, who's the head coach for Fenerbahce. I am happy to learn from... Who else am I happy to learn from? Uh, That's it. <laughs> we'll leave it at that for now. It's like, yeah. No, definitely. European basketball. And it's like, I've got such a deep passion for coaching what I'm learning that I know I can revolutionize uh, junior basketball in Australia. How? Okay, this is good because... How? Yeah. Man. <laughs> how long do you like, have? Like, it's not, about, it's not about how long do I have... Like, I love basketball that much that I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make the game better in Australia. Whatever it takes. And if that means dedicating myself to junior athletes to make them 10 times better than I was at their age, that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'll stay up till 3, 4, 5, 6 in the morning watching EuroLeague tape to be able to dissect offenses, to be able to incorporate drills on my floor based on what I've seen in a EuroLeague game. Like, that's pretty deep stuff. Mm. You care. Like, I'm fully dedicated to making my athletes the best that they can be. And I'm willing to go as far as I need to go to give them the, the, the advantage. Are you trying to revolutionize that industry? Uh, I don't know if it's, I don't know if revolutionize is the right word. What uh, word you definitely use? give an impact. And that's based on my experiences in Europe. Like, I think my biggest challenge was going to the Luxembourg Basketball Academy and, and learning uh, under Darko Ristic, Coach Darko Ristic. Um, he pushed me to my limits, definitely, in regards to physical and mental. I didn't know who I was until I got pushed to that limit, doing yeah. two a days, three hours in the morning, three hours at night, waking up at 6 a.m. and running in the, in the bloody snow. Like, that, that was some real military shit. Real military shit. And, and if I'm being completely honest, if something like that happened in Australia, that's prison time, man. <laughs> That's prison time, man. <laughs> like, like I'm being serious. Nah. Like, 
just keep it on the low keep it on the low but yeah no nah, there's nothing wrong with it like when, me i love it i love being pushed to my limits but getting woken up out of bed at 6 a.m and and okay running in the snow like whoa like shit man i'm sleeping like and that's where you get called pussy and you're this and you're that and it's like shit like like i don't think i am but once i went through all of that i realized shit i am really relative disciplined. yeah i am a pussy yeah I'm not getting up at 6 a.m. and running when, when it's raining outside, but I was forced to in the snow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So it exposed a different, different side to who you are. He's a Serbian background. You wonder why uh, the top four teams in Europe, like you're looking at uh, Spain, you're looking at uh, France, you're looking at Lithuania, looking at Serbia, and you wonder why they're up there in Europe. It's a totally different mentality. And, and that's from childhood, the way they develop and nurture and care for their athletes. Um, I know out here it's based on talent there's not as much love being put into the athlete there's more getting selected for teams based on who you are or who your parents are or what school you go to um, or how much you can invest the, the real invest in, is investment is in the growth of the child mm. not in the pocket of the establishment and people aren't going to like what I've got to say um, I'm a firm believer in that because I had the experience in Europe of how they develop athletes and how much love and care goes into helping that athlete grow. What I learned through my neglect as a child is my dad planted a seed and when it decided to grow, he left. So how is a seed, like if you talk about a plant, how's that seed meant to grow unless you nurture and water it and give it the correct sunlight? But he didn't nurture it. He just gave you a seed. He, you, he, planted, up to you. he planted a seed and he bounced. Yeah. So what I'm getting at is through me dissecting myself, I figured out, hang on, these kids are all seeds. If I nurture them and guide them correctly and care about them both on and off the court, who knows what they're going to be capable of achieving. For sure. So it's just giving, giving that component back. Now, if I can give what I didn't get, I know exactly what I can create because I know the potential that exists inside myself. Um, I know the investors are coming. I know the million dollar investors are coming. I know I'm going to be a millionaire one day. Like I know that. I know people are going to want to invest in me and I will get to choose who invests in me based on what I see, not based on what they say. So if I know that's coming for me, I also know what I can be for these kids because I'm investing in them and my investment will come through the investment of my kids because the results won't lie. And that just comes down to love and dedication and giving back what I never received. Mm. I don't think there's any people out there that I can consciously say, oh, he invested in me. There's people that I definitely respect and definitely look up to. And it's like, hey, I'll always remember that person because of this, this and this. But no one's really taking me under their wing and saying, hey, man, try it this way. Hey, but man, you I think can be that for someone else. And that's how I've learned how to get the results with the kids. Yeah. And that's the most fulfilling part is I know I cannot pick not one person that said, oh, that guy invested in me. And in I, your I, life. In my life. Yeah. And I know for a fact that it's going to start happening. There's going to be people that are going to start investing now. It's like, oh shit, this guy's got a bit of value in him. This guy's a little, a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of talent, a little bit of potential. And that investment will come. I just believe that it's too late for that now. And I've learned enough to be able to choose. Right. Whereas some of these kids don't know enough. So it's like, if I can be that rock, yes, they will fail. Yes, they will make mistakes. Yet I truly believe just by the support I offer and that, that my company offers, um, these kids will be the best versions of themselves early, earlier with the right information. And that's impact. Huge. Huge. When you went to play, I, was, I, didn't, I didn't even know you went to Europe to do that. Uh, yeah, I went. How back. did you? What, what did you do over there? And how did you facilitate that? Um, so my friend Milos actually. Ah, uh, Milos. Milos. Classic. Milos. What guy? <laughs> <laughs> no, my friend Milos actually went over to the academy, and I heard some good things about it. So I ended up going over with him for a second year. Um, didn't get a gig while I was over there. Um, ended up coming back to Australia, and then I went back for a second time. And it's like, I, I just fell in love with being able to wake up every day and train for three hours mm. in the morning, three hours in the evening, um, being around the group and the team. So it was a, it was a basketball academy. Um, I, I signed with um, Bedenburg Nizia in Luxembourg. Um, but yeah, just an incredible experience. Luxembourg, I'm sure you know, is one of, I think, 
top two or top three wealthiest countries in the world. Is it really? That's where all the corporate banks uh, in Europe are and where all the world's wealth is, is kept and held in the heart of Europe. So I, I learned a lot about quality of living. Main thing I learned, and this is another huge subject, is uh, I learned a shitload about genetically modified um, organisms um, and organic food and what chicken actually looks like. And for everybody out here in Australia, chicken is not white. Chicken is brown. The so flesh? The flesh is brown, my man. So <laughs> it, it's, it's amazing. Like People in Luxembourg speak six to seven languages. Now, hold on. How do you know you just weren't eating a different species of chicken? How, man? You see a chicken? I see a chicken. <laughs> you cut that thing inside, then you've got to ask yourself, hey, this shit ain't legit. So what I'm getting at is this. What I learned in Luxembourg is people are speaking minimum of five languages up to six or seven. Now, to hold a job in the corporate sector in Luxembourg, you need to be able to speak a minimum of three or four. All right, so I was meeting kids. You'd have a conversation with them in English. Someone would pop up and speak in German. The next one speaks up, speaks in Luxembourg. The next one's in French. And then they speak their native tongue, which is Portuguese. And I was like, what the fuck, man? Like, in a, I just said fuck. Like, that's not even proper English. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like, we're speaking English out here, broken English. You've got people over there at 12, 13, 14 year olds, year, years old already on their fourth or fifth language. How is that possible? I just asked the question. Let's do some research brain function so I looked at cellular energy understood what GMOs are genetically modified organisms is how people take um, different components of vegetables and food mm. and, and reprogram the like a tomato you see in a shelf yeah, in a grocery store I've seen all that shit and then it's That's like not regular all these people are growing natural crops the chickens aren't <laughs> fucking being pumped full of pesticides and herbicides and whatever else steroids yeah and you look at a chicken and you buy a chicken, it's like, hang on, and you taste the chicken and you don't feel any of the side effects that you feel over here. That shit's amazing to me. How, how is a person able to learn four languages by the time they hit 13 or, or 14? Like that stuff's amazing to me. So when I say quality of life, like it opened up my eyes to what we're missing out on in Australia, which then takes me back to how this country was formulated. Go on. And the foundation it was created on. The English. The English brought over convicts. Mm-hmm. Those convicts have reproduced over time and we carry a mentality like convicts. What's an example of like that convict mentality that you think is convict permeates menta- us? Harsh, inconsiderate, abrupt. All, all those qualities of someone who's doing it tough. Whereas when you go over there, people are eating healthy, people are respectful, people are kind people help each other create wealth now here it's not as common whereas over there a kid walks out of a louis vuitton store that's 13 14 years old and they'll go give their friend a pair of louis vuitton sneakers now it's not about the money it's not about the the materialistic component of it people are living so good out there that that stuff is exchangeable whereas here if you've got a pair someone's trying to steal them off you you know what i'm saying or someone's someone's trying to trying to take something that's yours but because they don't have it that's really interesting so it sounds like the society from day one is ingrained in Dude, really c- positive values no, man quality constructive quality everything is about quality so that that's what i mean by the little things like now when i sweep a floor i do it to the best of my ability because yeah. it's, it's what i represent and it's like we, we we are so far detached from those principles and foundations that it's chaos out there man the shit that's going on like it's ridiculous borderline we're going to be like america in the next 10 years now i'm not putting that into existence that's just my assessment based on what's happening in society which is which is sad which is sad it's like we think that we're living in this amazing country you don't know what quality is till you go to a place like luxembourg or dubai or something like that now i'm not saying there's good or bad good and bad Uh, i'm not saying that everything's bad or everything's good i'm talking about the quality of life do you understand what I'm saying? Now, quality of life doesn't mean the materialistic objects. Quality of life doesn't mean any of that shit or financial benefits. Quality of life means um, how you live it. Mm. Your lifestyle? Your lifestyle. And that doesn't mean being able to go on holidays and all that shit. It's like quality of life meaning a reflection of who you are. Mm. You can't get that everywhere. Whereas over there, it's a lot more common. It's really interesting. I've never been and, to And Europe. I brought that concept back here. And applied it to yourself. And applied it not only to myself, but the people that I'm associated to, 
And that's what I mean by bringing value and worth to people around you. And it's like, if I can do that, I think I'm creating a positive change. And it's honestly amazing. Like when you see a 12, 13 year old kid that speaks three, four, five, six, seven languages, that's really eye opening. Mm. And a lot of that inspirations come to, you know what I mean, start eating organic. And it's like not just organic, but understanding what cellular energy is. Where's your food come from? Photosynthesis, all that sort of stuff. It's very important to dabble into that information so you know what you're putting into your body. Absolutely. Because most people, life gives life. And if you're not considerate about the life that you are putting into body, and I think if you eat meat, we're very disconnected from the food we what eat. What are your thoughts on that? I have a lot of thoughts, Ivan. How, how much time do you have? Let's go, man. Let's talk. I don't mind. Well, what are my thoughts on whether, what? Whether or not people are going to watch and actually... Now, that doesn't... That don't bother me. Like, oh, this shit's fucking boring as fuck. What the hell it's, are but that's... Talking about? Like, it, it ain't about... It ain't for them. 100%. Right? That's why I, I... Are you vegan? No. Are you vegetarian? No. Are you pescatarian? I'm an omnivore. Beautiful. I like Elaborate. plants and I like meat. They yep. both serve me in my life for my purpose. Yeah. I'm not against either. There is carnivore diet where they only eat meat, very minimal vegetables. There's vegans who only eat plant-based. Mm. I can see relevancy and purpose and you can attain your the own health to both. Yeah. There are, the reality is there's a lot of biological variability between human to human. We have our similarity, but there's biological variability that determines and, and characterizes that not all humans respond the same to the same 100%. lifestyle and nutrition factors. Now, there are some... I do a lot of note taking and I've kind of written my, well, I don't know, fuck it, I'll pull it up. Um, because people ask me, like, uh, what is your kind of nutrition approach? I kind of send to my clients and I've kind of created a bit of a uh, outline and guideline, okay, of how I try and live and put the life in my body. Um, whole foods, uh, large, diverse portions of plants and fungi, grass fed, organic, and wild caught. The predominant meat I eat right now is game meat. So right now it's kangaroo. Kangaroo. And you would have heard Rabbit, me talk about kangaroo. that? Kangaroo, yeah. On the last podcast? No, I didn't hear about it. Oh, okay. Well, I talked about that. Was that with Jay and... That was with Lockie Kennett. I didn't watch the whole thing. I think I watched the first 20 minutes. And that's okay. You got to two, yeah. two times speed that bitch sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go on... Like I can understand how people's emotional reaction to kangaroo. We can get into that if we want. Organ meats is nature's multi multivitamin. Organs? Ha organ meats. Yeah. Heart liver how, so i don't know if we can drop their name but how much did you how much of this information did you take from the gut place fifth element wellness we can talk about them of course oh, that's sweet they're, they're, they're dave o'brien i want to get dave on this that'd be dope if you got dave and you know dave oh one, you do one yeah. of my one of my best friends reza muhammad works there as well does he yeah. coach coach yeah awesome into jujitsu and stuff like that but um if i lived there i'd be working man, there man uh, like those guys are on another level they are truly holistic hey and that's the approach i'm trying to take with my coaching yeah like maybe i can hold back at like swearing and shit that's not really holistic but that's the kind of approach i want to take with the whole basketball thing is 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 um add the holistic approach to it because no one's doing it in australia like you can say holistic but that's a whole different level what they're doing for people and yeah. the results they're getting are absolutely ridiculous and i and i've worked i consulted with dave for a year where i was doing gut protocols and he did a macro nutrition plan and i he taught me a lot he's a fucking genius absolute genius you've met with him I, i've never met with him just what i've heard through reza and reza speaks very highly Unreal. of dave o'brien and for him to i don't know i'm pretty sure reza's been there for about four or five years now if mm -hmm. i'm correct and for someone to stay that long in a company that's not there speaks volumes on the kind of environment they're in most so. definitely so yeah the organ meats actually was introduced to me by dave like i, I knew of them but we have where one thing i want to do, shout out to them yeah um, lion's mane lion's mane mushroom mushroom extract yeah yep. i got that from them just by following and it's like you got the life cycle liquid drop i have no 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 i've got the pure, pure oh, the powder, powder. Um, i have been drinking that during this period with the water yeah. and when i talk about mental clarity yep sharp yeah sharp like a lot of people find benefit very interesting how's it taste though is it palatable uh, best way to describe it is musky yeah there's no bad taste um i'll just say musky sure yeah okay. but yeah that yeah interesting there's stuff. good research behind it too huge so organ meats um lower saturated fat and not that saturated fat is necessarily inherently inflammatory or, or negative but for certain, like I have a, I've done my genetics, genetic testing, and I have a gene called. Who'd, you, who'd you go through for that? Twenty-three and me. 
I might have to get the details. Yeah, I done. Mean, I think this is a perfect time for me to start doing all that sort of stuff. You want to optimize your your health yeah. and truly become a human optimization beast? I think I'm taking consideration I'm everything. In the best position possible now that my foundation is yep. completely clean. So I want to build on spiritually, hundred percent, and emotionally, and physically, yeah, and mentally, yeah. <laughs> like it's <laughs> ticket it all, baby, hundred um, percent. There's an FTO gene that basically I have that implies that people with an FTO gene do not. Uh, Are you superhuman, bro? You know what? <laughs> Don't tell him, man. Don't tell him. That's uh, what my DNA said. You no, got, there's you, you got an FTO gene. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Let's go to stand for something that we can make up. <laughs> Fucking something, something. Um, so basically, you don't uh, process saturated fats as well, and it can be more inflammatory to you yeah. and uh, have an inclination towards diabetes and obesity. Um, big one that Dave taught me as well, food rotation. Most people build ins- uh, build food sensitivities because they don't rotate their food and eat What's seasonally. What's he saying to ro- rotate? Is he saying seasonally? Or? Se- seasonally. Don't eat the same food all year round. We get 100%. we we get caught, and I've I've done that historically through my life, and most people do. Think so. He said to rotate food seasonally. Imagine if you rotated everything in your presence seasonally, things would change dramatically. Oh, that's a great point. And so, when you go to a supermarket, you shouldn't be able to get a tomato or eat a tomato all year round. You shouldn't be able to get an orange all year round. I appreciate this information. It's because we can import globalization we can import export on a moment's notice and we can genetically modify plants 100%. and vegetables and we c- why do you th- i got told from people that i know who know people that you know someone that knows someone that knows <laughs> someone someone Fa- farmers <laughs> are told by these grocery store yeah. companies that we require your tomatoes this is an example to have certain it can't have any dimples or marks on it Mm -hmm. it has to have a high shoulder and fall off well it has to be perfectly red and shiny so they got prerequisites that they have to meet so they're willing to do whatever they need to do and if they don't then they're not sometimes they're just not going to eat they're not going to live and sell and make money buy organic produce predominantly but here's the thing i'm intelligent with it so there's uh there are certain fruits and vegetables that have a higher propensity for pesticides and herbicides right these are the ones that are sweeter Right? Mm-hmm. These are the ones where more bugs right. and insects are likely to get on them. So we're talking about berries, for example. Um, if you look, on, so there's the classification on that side, which I try and get uh, organic, and there's a classification on the other side. It's like the dirty dozen and the clean 15 is yeah. what they're called. You can Google it. And I try and get the dirty dozen, which usually have mo- more pesticides, organic. Yeah. And the other ones, I'm... You work with both worlds. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because even that's a world that is muddled with confusion. What the hell is organic? Is mm-hmm. organic like it's that's another topic. Um, prebiotics, which again Dave I- implied to me uh, through things like sauerkraut and kimchi, through natural sources, not through powder form. So a prebiotic are through natural sources. Yep. Okay, we're talking about live uh, bacteria in food, yep. whereas a probiotic, which I do take as well is gonna be contained in a capsule and will help activate and move things through the gut. They have different purposes and functions. Um, And take longer time between swallowing each bite uh, is a big one. Waiting longer and chewing your food more. Um, You always heard that as a kid, chew your food. It's like, where did that come from? But we never did. It's like, if you want to eat something, it's like down it, you know what I mean? And what you're doing is you're jacking yourself up in a sympathetic state. This conversation by itself, it's like that kind of information, we don't have access to it unless you look for it. Yeah. And it's like, that's a huge disadvantage. Huge disadvantage. Well, look, there's a number of disadvantages. The fact that it takes 15 to 20 minutes for uh, leptin to be stimulated. Leptin stimulates satiety and have your fullness, okay? You down a meal, you can overeat quite easily. Easy. Number two is digestive enzymes. If you're not chewing your food adequately, this big bolus of food, we have enzymes, salivary amylase in our mouth and pancreatic enzymes that get secreted. If you're not chewing this food and breaking it down and uh, uh, masticating it, um, it's now not broken down and your gut and stomach have to do more work to digest it. And some people have digestive, most people have digestive and gut issues so that's going to get put my like, hand for that. Most people, yeah, there you that. go. Hundred percent. That was a made aware to me. Like half the reason why I started this is because of gut health. And I've been talking to Reza a lot. It's um, 
I was uh, staying in in Windsor for a while. Um, I've moved back to the area now, but uh, Windsor, where's that? Windsor, just off Chapel Street. Yeah. So Paran. Oh my bad. But um, tripping. Yeah, speaking of res, res back and forth, and it's like just trying to get in. I'm where. Are what area are they in again? I forgot the area. Fitzroy. There. Fitzroy, that's it. So it's a, it's a bit tw- of a drive out bro, there. Bro, you, you fucking 20, 30 minutes. Shut your mouth. It's, it's a bit uh, of a drive out If there. I go an hour, once a month to see him, you're fine. You got, it's worth it. You're going to get a gut test. 100%. And you I, can I do think Skype I'm just calls. Lucky. I, I think I'm just lucky I get to talk to Reza, who's in there firsthand 24-7. Yeah. And he's Learned done a shitload him. of courses and and short courses and all that sort of stuff. So he's pretty, uh, pretty intelligent. I'm lucky that I've got a friend, yeah, like I said, that's that's involved personally but um man the public need all that information it's Do. just it is very costly and it's like 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 reza said to me you've got to invest in your health man you're going to invest in your future the same way they're investing in courses and they're they're learning from you know the best that shit costs money that shit costs money people expect things for free it's like man if you want to see someone that's legit it's going to cost you money now if you want that you need to work harder yourself can't expect things for free. Like your gut isn't going to change its hel- uh, change itself. You've got to invest in it. You've got to invest in your mind. You've got to invest in your body. You've got to invest in your spirit. That takes time, effort, and energy. If you're going to be a lazy motherfucker, good luck at the doctors. They're certainly not going to fix you. They're going to write that script. They're going to put on that stamp, and, and they're going off. to get their fucking paycheck from yep. the fucking yep. whoever the hell it is that pays them to sign you off to the pharmaceutical companies, yep. which is an absolute load of shit. Yeah, they, they, they're going to get uh, a cut per prescription that they make 100%. so it's an incentive to get you out as quick as possible I, I grew up with my mum on prescription medication for depression and anxiety mm-hmm. and it's like whoa like when, when you see that growing up there's a there's a huge uh, pain that comes with that it's like why is mum taking all this stuff why is mum always sad why is mum always zonked out on the couch and I'm not saying this to disrespect my mother but this stuff uh, really fucking motivates me to learn more and give more back to society through results not through words and, mm-hmm. and that's the main thing it's like what can i do today to better myself to help the next person and and that's how i see things changing now my platform right now isn't big yet one day it might be or yours might be it's so one it's person like at a time 100 percent. and like attracts like and mm-hmm. eagles fly with eagles and pigeons feed on bullshit so it's like the, there's a process there that you have to go through to start flying on that level and once you do you'll start to associate yourself with people who are like-minded and hopefully with whatever you inherit whether it's information or wealth of knowledge or resources you do your best to give back to other people um, who don't have access to it Mm. i think a good metaphor that i going back on the health thing is to give people perspective People will complain about things are expensive to invest in your health, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it is. It's an investment. Okay, let me put it to you like this. You have a car. And you know I'm going to go with this. Think about all the money you spend in your car. You're going to, not only are you going to service your car more than you get a blood test and service your body, 100%. you're going to spend exponentially more money on it. We 100%. spend thousands of dollars on fuel. And how messed up is that? Not just that. Just That's just driving to uni or driving to the shops or driving to your bloody auntie's house. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you're spending all this money, yet you're not thinking about you. A car will take you point A to point B. Body's going to take you from birth to death. 100%. What the fuck's important to you? But And that brings me back to all of this. It's like... So if some people disagree with me. Um, I know you people have all these illnesses out there. Even that coronavirus bullshit that's out there at the moment. Oh, no. <laughs> Can, uh, cancer. Uh, diabetes. All these illnesses that are killing people. Yeah. I believe that self-hate is the biggest killer. Yeah. And fear. Self-hate which then creates fear, which then deteriorates your body, mind, and spirit. So that's the biggest killer. Like for you to love yourself enough to take care of your body, your mind, your spirit, to understand how your second brain works, which is your your stomach, uh, you need to have a sense of care and a sense of, you know, self what's self-worth to be able to take care of that. But the the thing is though, it's it's like when you talk about the elites, I don't talk about the elites. The people with money, the people with money take care of themselves because they got access to information that the general population, middle class to lower class, doesn't have access to. Now, what I mean doesn't has, have access to, for you to be able to feed yourself th- those sorts of nutrients, you need some level of income. Now, everyone's not ed- educated on business. 
a lot of people are too fear, fearful to put themselves out there and run their own business. Do you know what I mean? So how are you meant to get access to what you need, the correct uh, nutrients, the correct uh, information without having some sort of financial income coming now, in that can sustain a level where you can take care of yourself at optimum okay. level. Fair. Because nutrition, whole foods, all these things that I mentioned, they are an investment. Seeing a health professional investment, investment, right? But you got to start somewhere. 100%. And that can start. You got you to work with what you got. Basically. Yes. Play the cards that you were dealt. Right. One thing at a time. Like you don't have to start at fucking five hundred dollar consultations and gut stool tests and all this. You can start three hundred. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're at his three hundred. Three hundred, and then there's two hundred left over to go get your pre's and your pros and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> it's all good, man. <laughs> it's an investment, but you can start with okay, one meal per week. I'm gonna cook. It's just gonna be. Fuck it, whatever. It could be meat free. It could be whole foods only. It could be no processed foods. The discipline behind that, though, like you, you have to, you have to be clear in mind, and bo- in mind and spirit for you to be able to be disciplined enough to hold yourself accountable to that stuff. I, I don't know. I don't know about that, man. I I am yet to see someone, and correct me if I'm wrong, that is suffering with. Um, Maybe I shouldn't say that. Well, I'll just... Actually, no, what I, what I want to say is I haven't... Okay. Sa- so someone who's suffering with chronic depression, yeah, chronic anxiety, um, and is living in, the, in that circumstance, uh-huh. I'm yet to see someone that is feeding themselves the adequate nutrition to optimize brain function. Well, that we're in agreement. We are or not? We are. All right, perfect. Because I, I don't want to... It's not even about stepping on people's toes. It's just like that plays a huge part in anxiety and depression. It does. Because if you're not feeding the brain the correct nutrients that it needs, then you're going to suffer dramatically in all those other components. Now, if you're feeding and popping pills down your throat to make you feel better, you're already self-destructing. You're, you're killing yourself. And the doctor's helping you. <laughs> and getting paid for it and nobody questions that shit at all because traditional medicine is based on re- reactivity re- yeah. uh, being reactive rather than yeah. proactive yeah they're very good at diagnosis and treatment but we're not good at getting to the root cause which is where holistic wellness and health and the direction that my career is going and i also is. believe that the whole religion component takes you away from the spiritual component of it people are there's this dogma and mm. stigma about religion so it's like oh god People are questioning whether or not God exists because they associate it with, with religion. It's like, man, that detaches you from who you are and what your DNA is and your origin. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, if you detach yourself from that, then you become dependent on earthly things and earthly ways of doing things instead of living a spiritual life. Now, if you do that, that's where the doctors creep in and the pharmaceutical company creeps in because now you're dependent on man and not dependent on Self. the information which is internal. Everything's mm-hmm. in your DNA. Everything you need to know exists within you. You just need to tap into it. I truly believe that. But people wait. People wait until shit hits the fan before they really make a decision. They, and this is the problem. But at the same time, sometimes people it's need it. It's self-inflicted. I, like and the majority of <laughs> when, I, when I was mixing with with drugs and alcohol, it was self-inflicted. And it's like it's the whole cop out of oh, you know, I was trying to run away from this and trying to run away from that. Man, I wasn't running away from shit. I was self-destructing because I didn't understand it. I was I was, what's the right word? Self-medicating mm. because I didn't understand it. Now, if I understood it, I wouldn't have self-medicated. Yet, it's like all right. No one loves me. No one cares about me. I'm going to burn myself. How far can I take it? And it becomes a game between you and yourself. Now, whether people agree or not, the whole being dependent on um, prescription medication, I don't believe in it because I was, I was on prescription medication. So what don't you believe in then? That it helps people. Oh, right. I'm, I'm a firm believer in that. And it's like, uh, I know people will cut me down for saying that. I'm a firm believer because I went through that. I came out of that and it's like, hang on a second. This is how I feel like a prime example. When I was young, they, 
they said that I had t uh, attention deficit disorder, ADHD, super hyperactivity. Man, I was pretty good at sports, like really good at sports as a kid. Super hyperactive, super disruptive, super creative, great at art, great at drawing, doing all that sort of stuff. And when they label you as ADHD, they prescribe you with... Um, Ritalin? Ritalin. Ritalin actually <laughs> breaks down and re de regenerate. Uh, what's the right word? When, when something breaks down, re... What's the right word? When you break something down, what's the right word? I can't think of the word. It basically fucks up your pineal gland. Mm. Oh. I know what you're going. Read it, read it, read. I know what you're trying to say. All right, so I can't think of the word. We've right had now. this, we've briefly touched on this before. So this, this breaks down your pineal gland. Now, as a kid, all your creativity comes. Calcifies? Cal so it calcifies. Degrades? De-regenerate? De What's the right word? I can't think of the right word. De <laughs> 29 days of fasting. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, I need some food, man. But um, yeah, but basically closes and breaks down the function of your pineal gland, which inspires creativity and inspires freedom of thought. So it's like they labeled me this. And it's like, I remember taking Ritalin when I was a kid and I was like, I feel weird. Like my brain wasn't working like it was when I wasn't on it. And it's like, you start believing and thinking that you got these problems that don't really exist. Like what's hyperactivity? Dude, the kid's full of fucking energy. There's no wasted energy. All the energy is directed towards what the kid wants to do. Yet as parents, parents will sit back, oh, shut up, stop talking, or stop doing this. You're only saying that because you can't be fucked playing with the kid because he's got more energy than you because you work eight to 12 hours a fucking day <laughs> and you've got all this other shit to take care of. The kid's just being a kid. Yet the world's found a way to make that kid fucking ADHD or whatever the fuck. And they want to suppress him. Suppress them to create money. Now, how do, how, how do you know that these kids aren't ultimate geniuses? And if you actually allow them to be themselves without putting injections into their bodies and <laughs> giving them this medication and claiming that they are this and that, how do you know that they can't change the world? How do you know? You don't know. Now, if you look at some of, the create, some of the stuff I did in school in regards to drawing and stuff, I exposed myself as a child in regards to how intelligent I was. Now, to average people, I'm not intelligent. To average people, I'm hyperactive and all the rest of it. My mum told me I was uh, three years old when she bought me my first bike with training wheels and I smashed the training wheels off and rode a two-wheel bike at three years old. I smashed the training wheels off and rode a two-wheel bike. I was doing that kind of shit as a kid. And it's like, after a while, he's got a bad attitude. He's not listening. He's that. And the world puts this shit on you. Get in the box. And I started fucking believing that shit, man. Mm. I started believing that shit. And all of a sudden, there's Ivan. He's got a bad attitude. All right. Now that you said it, I'm going to be that to you. That's, that's what I adopted. You're going to fulfill their destiny for you. I started to adopt that shit. Yeah. So again, you, it, knowledge, understanding, wisdom. I didn't understand what was happening to me. So I started to act out based on what someone was saying. It's like, you got a bad attitude? Fuck you. And, and that's what people started to get out of me after a while. So what I'm getting at in, in regards to this is now that I've gotten older, I've realized that the whole ADH thing and giving kids medication and all the rest of it, it's like, man, just let a kid be a kid. If they're going the wrong way, someone needs to be there to redirect them. But you can't tell a kid not to be a kid. You can't diagnose a kid with ADHD because they're super hyperactive. Now, I'm saying you can't. They're saying you can Love that child and take care of that child and I guarantee they'll end up in the right place. I guarantee it. With the correct love and correct guidance and the correct platforms, that kid will find its way. You don't need to medicate these children. But it's the easier option for people. They want to suppress 100%, the symptoms. Because it, come on, they can't how deal how with many, them. I don't know the exact figure of how many kids are being born each day. Yet, if you, ca if you calculate it, how much money can be made... <laughs> from the establishment through the pharmaceutical companies if you just start diagnosing every single kid with ADHD. How many kids, on, not just kids, but parents on a day-to-day -day basis go to the doctors because they've got a headache, Alexander? All right, take some Panadol. Fuck the Panadol. Drink seven or eight liters of this a day and your headache will go away. Supplement that with organic food do some research on what cellular energy is and what it actually does to your body and start putting in the right nutrients as opposed to 
allowing them to medicate you and tell you that you have XOXOXO. Now, I'm not saying that everything they do is wrong because they've saved, they save lives every single day. Yes. They save lives every single day. Yet there has to be a, you know what I mean? A bit of a balance there in what's real and what's fake. Agreed. No, I'm not here to change the world. I've just said my piece based on what I've learned. Mm. But shit, man, there's some people that are really sick out there. Really sick. Like my godmother, someone, my godmother was raped by her father when she was a, a kid. Um, she fell pregnant to him um, and she lost the baby. Um, she was an alcoholic for the rest of her life. And I grew up a, as a young kid watching that. And this person loved me more than anybody in my life. And when I lost her, a piece, I, I, I lost myself at 12 years old. 12 years old, I lost myself when she committed suicide and passed away. The day before she committed suicide, she made me make her a promise. Um, and that's, that's what the tattoo is. And that's what I dedicate everything I do to her. Um, made her a promise. And yeah, you could only imagine what someone like that went through as a child being violated like that. Um, it's tough, man. Someone like that, stuck on alcohol their whole life prescription medication anxiety depression um didn't know who she was or didn't have a way out and suicide was was way. her way out and it's like I, i've got a deep 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 perspective on all this bullshit deep perspective on all this bullshit and i question whether or not this shit's real this whole depression anxiety thing it's like there's there's people really struggling out there alex really struggling and they're stuck in this mindset thinking that they have no way out. And there is a way out. Mm -hmm. There is a way out. I got out. I survived. I survived. And it's like mine was started and created through witnessing these things through my childhood. Watching my mum get beat. Or finding police reports of what my dad did to my mum. That's where my depression and anxiety started. And, and instead of me voicing what was going on with me, I went internal, man. I realized, fuck, you can't talk about this stuff at school. I can't tell my teacher at 12 years old that my godmother made me make her a promise and then she committed suicide the next day and that was the person who I was closest to my whole childhood. You can't talk about these things. Or well, you're not meant to talk about these things. So if, if I went through that sort of stuff and, and I closed myself off from the world in regards to allowing things out, then everything was coming in is what distorted me. And I had no idea what was happening to me. So how, how I see it is there's millions of kids out there that probably didn't go through the same way same thing i did um yet they're going through something and, and there's no difference between your pain and my pain it's the same just the circumstances change so i can't say hey i went through more than you my pain's worse that's bullshit that's absolute fucking bullshit and i'm not going to sit here and say that i went through more than you so you can't talk about it pain is pain man the difference is, is how deep that pain is and whether or not that pain is able to heal. Now, my, my godmother couldn't heal. My godmother couldn't recover. There was no one around her that could draw her back. Do you know what I'm saying? I think there's a quote that says something like, the saddest thing in life is not death. It's what dies inside you while you're still in life. And that's something that I've always held on to. And I died. I died and I was walking around aimlessly. Yet I recovered. Now, I believe everyone has the same opportunity to recover from anxiety and depression. Why I don't believe in it is because it just comes down to information. And, and sometimes that cut is so deep that people don't know how to get out of it. They don't know how to heal it. And self-medicating self is the only option. Do you know what I mean? It's like I'm working with kids now and I love what I do. Um, a lot of people might not agree with what I'm saying here because I do work with children. I'll probably try to use it against me. Um, I think that's a, a load of shit. People can't use anything that I went through against me because I've dealt with it. I've healed from it. And now I'm here to do everything I can, not only not, not to try to prevent other kids going through it, but to be that rock and to be that coach and to be that mentor that they can come to and communicate about whatever they want. And there will be zero judgment just to give them a place where they're comfortable and content to communicate. Because I know I never had that and there, I have got family members that have committed suicide and I had to experience that. I had to go through that at a very early age and I didn't understand it. And the fact that I recovered from this and I've, I've found healing and I've found 
uh, solace in what I've been through, I want everybody to have that. I want everybody to have that. Tough thing to go through at 12 when you someone does that. And that was my closest connection. I find it very strange that it was my godmother and how my mum actually met her. She used to live next door to my, my um, mother's unit. And I'm pretty sure it was soon after she had the miscarriage. I, I can't say exactly, um, but she saw me in the window of my mother's house and she used to come and play at the window and stuff like that. So um, my mum ended up making her my godmother. I just find it really strange that my c closest connection to love was my godmother and that she was the one who I felt the closest to connection to. And the weird thing about it is she had a miscarriage to a baby boy and she saw me and that connection I think was a little bit darker and a little bit deeper to a certain pain that she went through. And I knew that she loved me to death. I didn't know what, why, when, who, any of that stuff until later in life I started to figure it out. And when I lost her, I lost myself because I lost love. And I realized my battle for the next, well, whatever it was, 10, 15 years was a battle between love and hate. And I lost love and I didn't understand what love was, was and my perception on love was distorted based on what I went through as a child with my dad and my mum and these experiences with my godmother. And yeah, I just, I've learned a lot through that process. So yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, it's all good. Like these things, I, I would have been in tears maybe six to eight months ago. But like I said, this fast has done wonders for me. It's exposed me to these things. And I'm confident um, in saying that I'm going to represent her for the rest of my life. And if there's anything I can do for anybody else out there that has gone, anything, if I can do anything for anyone out there that has gone through a similar thing to me, then you've got access to me for whatever you need. And that's the main thing. It's almost like... And I say this with all due respect, it's almost like she needed it to die in order for you to give. 100%. What she couldn't. It's crazy, man. And that's what I mean by purpose. I've always has a, had a strong connection. Still now, even though she's dead, I've got a massive, 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 massive connection to her. And I feel like my purpose came from that transition. Because what was, what was given to me from her was love without judgment. And I haven't experienced that from anybody, mm. including my first hand relatives telling me who I am and what I am and judging me based on what I'm not doing or what I am doing. And she was the only one who loved me without judgment. And that experience, I'll carry that for the rest of my life. And when I lost that, I lost myself completely because I, everywhere I turned, it wasn't the same. And at 12 years old, to carry that by yourself. This is the first time I've ever spoken about this publicly, but even to another, another human being. Really? Um, it's only a conversation that I've had between God and myself and, and through prayer. Um, that's basically what it was. And I went internal from that moment on. Everything that came out, come out of me was hateful, negative, disrespectful. My morals went out the window. My values went out the window. Um, I lost myself completely. The person my mum raised me to be was non-existent from 12 onwards. And that's maybe being completely transparent. And I think more people need to step up and communicate like this. Yeah. You're leading the charge. You can see there's no emotion here either. Like there's full contentness in me communicating like this. I know my purpose in life is far greater than what I ever thought or perceived it to be. Yet I know I'm on my way. Probably because of her plays a huge part yeah purpose man you don't have to share this if you don't want to but the promise yeah what was it so that's one thing i won't communicate i'd rather live it because the promise i made her mm. i need to fulfill that and i will fulfill that right because done what what i promised i need to give back to her okay and and uh that's something i will do and I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it the right way. And I think that's something that you quoted before is when I say I'll do it the right way, there's, there's a right way to do this. Mm -hmm. Maktub, have you heard of maktub? No. It's an Arabic phrase, it's like it is written. Yeah. It's already done, it's, it's like she, legacy. Like she had to die for me to, to, for me to live, like it's, it's crazy to say, but all the darkness I went through after that, mm -hmm. huge lessons, huge lessons, huge. You just had to put the pieces together.
What are you thinking? I think a part of... Because this is... I'm pretty sure I mentioned something similar to you. Like you asked me, I think two years ago, like, mm. what, what does I promise me? Yeah. And, and the reason why you've got me on the podcast is the very thing that we're talking about now. What was it back then that you were intrigued by? About that in particular? Yeah. To imprint something on your body is a... It's usually not a light task. It obviously every, means every something. Every single tattoo I've got is associated to her. Okay. So, usually people tattoo and imprint something on their body for the rest of their life because it means a lot to them. And so I like asking what those things mean because you can then learn about a person that way pretty quickly. Because mm -hmm. people don't, I don't know, you don't really get to really know about people, which is why I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. I want to learn about people. I want to yeah. hear what they got to say. What was it that intrigued you about the promise? Mm. I guess your curiosity, you want to know what it was or what it is. But that means you'd have to have some sort of depth if you want to know that. Your words. I've had people laugh at me about it. It's like, why'd you get angel wings? What the hell's a sarik? Like, what's, what's the other ones? Angel wings. I, I've got some on my neck and I just got different things. I've got my yeah, whole back tatted. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the whole I promise, people taking the piss. Like, oh, I promise. And just throwing digs and shit. And I just keep my mouth shut. I and see it's why like, you asked that. We'll, we'll see one day. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see one day. It don't matter about that. We don't need to talk. No. I'm, I'm going to let myself talk the right way. But most of the time it's taken me a long time man like man when i say i love basketball with all my heart like i love basketball with all my heart and i'm 30 years old i haven't accomplished shit in basketball like i lost my career because i kept my mouth closed as a child what do you mean you lost your career like i didn't make it i, d I haven't been able to fulfill my potential because i've been holding this back for a very long time and I believe at 30 now, it's, it's, it's a new, I have a new lease on life and a new opportunity to build on a solid foundation yeah. that I created myself. No one created this for me. I had, to, I had to pave my own way because no one paved one for me from scratch. Like I had to learn the hard way. Good. I slept in my car. I slept in a basketball stadium. Like I've, I've been homeless. I kept my mouth shut the whole time. Like some of the things that I went through in the last three years building this academy not once have i complained but i've been through some shit man i've been through some shit and it's like not many people are going to openly come out and say hey man i had to sleep in my car for three months or hey man when i first left the family home i had to sleep in a basketball stadium that i had access to no one knew i was staying there you know when they do talk about it though when they make it but you in all respect, you haven't made that's, it. I'm, that's why you're that's still why talking I, about it. Like, like I'm, not, I'm not talking about everything. I know, and, and I promise myself, like, it's like I'm saying bits and pieces. Yeah. Um, I promise myself that I'm not going to tell everything until I do. Mm. Because I believe that God will give me the right place and the right time to do so. This was more so me transitioning from a fast and just being completely transparent. Because not many people know me out there other than the person that's made a shitload of mistakes. And that person is not who I am. It's who I was. And I think it's important uh, to put myself out there as this right in front of you. Um, firstly, to apologize to myself for the ignorance and not knowing any better. And then to apologize to every single person around me that I've affected in a negative way um, and haven't brought value to their lives. So that sort of stuff needs to be public for you to be able to move on. Mm you kind of unburden yourself and let it go 100 forgiveness sets a prisoner free it's then you realize the prisoner was always you and no one can judge me or punish me as much as i've punished myself over the last 30 years through what i've been through i blamed myself for a lot of it do you still not anymore a child never has a choice yeah a yeah. child comes into this world innocent just a pristine yeah pure clean pure yeah what happens to that child during the growth is out of its control until that child becomes conscious of its surroundings and i have only just become conscious of everything around me how can people become conscious and find that light for the people who are stuck seek truth seek truth what does that look like 
just information just be open seek information my, my 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 perspective i can't force this upon anyone else i had to accept that there is a god mm. i had to accept that i am insignificant in this world i had to accept that a human's love is not capable of fulfilling what god can fulfill i had to accept that the truth hurts and first of all you have to be honest with yourself about all these flaws um, and not be constantly seeking validation from people mm. like you are enough you are good enough you are lovable you are likable you have all the potential in the world if you actually understand that it exists within you it doesn't exist externally and that's why I think we are the gods we are God I think it's a big claim to say I am the God I believe that God does exist inside within you. us yeah, but its existence within us. Do you know us, what I'm saying? There's just the like the ego thing. I get yeah. it. It's like a, it's like a very uh, big, grandiose statement to make. Uh, Kanye West said he was a god, and all of a sudden he crashed, and now he's come back with a rebirth. Rebirth. You know what I mean? And and that's the main thing is I I am I feel that I am reborn. Yet tomorrow, if I go do XOXO and it doesn't align with what I've said, I'm gonna come crashing down again. As you should. Do you know what I'm saying? So from a universal perspective, I've made the statement that I'm going to follow Jesus Christ and do right, not by not just by myself, but by everybody around me. There's a certain level and standard you have to hold yourself to after that. Absolutely. And that's my biggest fear is being like my dad. And I believe until this point, that's controlled me. Mm. And I realize that I'm not like him. I'm the total opposite. I just have to live in that in the image that I want to be not in the image that was created for me. You realize you have a choice. 100%. That you can drive. And that's what I mean by being fully conscious now. Yeah. I wasn't conscious before. And when I say I wasn't conscious, I didn't understand. That's what I mean by not being conscious. I knew I was doing the wrong things. Taking drugs, drinking, getting into fights, disrespecting people, stealing, doing all that sort of stuff. Like I knew I was doing wrong. And deep down, that's what buries you, is you know you're doing wrong and you bury yourself. But it's like I'm, I'm conscious now that that's not who I am and that's who I was being with my negligence. Mm, not you know who you I mean? were, it's who you were being. And who you're being is who you are. No, who I was being with, was who I was with the level of knowledge I had at the time. Yeah. Now I know better. Mm. And I know better because I found, um, found purpose within coaching children and giving back the information to them. Mm. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not going to coach adults. Like, I'd love to work with pro athletes one day. Like, I see that happening too. Yet, I think from a foundation, st foundation standpoint, working with kids now is what's building, building my drive and building my motivation. And as they start to develop, they're going to become young, young adults and no doubt professionals. And the ball will keep rolling from there. Exactly. So, yeah, just giving 110% to what I'm, what I'm doing. That's beautiful, man. I'm glad you let that out of you. It's been out for a while, just not publicly, I guess. Yeah, but that's that's what I mean. Yeah. Did you want to read that second diary you got there? Is that the reflection post? What do you uh, post fast? I don't know about reflection. I don't have any reflection. Just a what shit, is all the highlighted stuff in there? Shitload of, shitload of, um, personal development. Because you brought that for a reason too. That's your second diary. Yeah, is there something I don't know about a reason. No, nothing that I really want to share. No? I'd rather just do the work. Do the work. There's something really humbling in uh, in developing yourself and, and, and doing things. Like I always had a fear of doing what I thought or doing what I envisioned. And it's like there was a huge fear. It's like, can I handle success? Can I handle millions of dollars? Do you know what I mean? Can, can, I, can I handle having a wife and kids? What's the answer you're getting? Yes. Yet it was a fear. Fair enough. It is what it is. But it's kind of uh, kind of exciting, man. Getting results. Doing things the right way. Within yourself. Hundred percent. Yeah. It's uh. You're seeing the fruits of your labor. Hundred percent. Very strange. All you have to do is help people and be genuine with what you're doing. <laughs> Who would have thought? I'm, I'm a fuck up, man. I've been a fuck up, but uh, it's not always going to be like that. So, no. Now you realize that you're in complete control. I wish more people would join the party. <laughs> I think that's 
they can if you live the life to your greatest potential and you communicate these ideas to the world what more can you do you can't force change upon people you just need 100%. to be it 100% and then it will manifest and happen what are the three main things that you think have impacted or changed your life in the positive basketball yeah I think I would be the person I am without it it's an amazing game isn't it oh I think I, I didn't understand the game until the last four years I think really like, when it comes to high IQ and understanding how to play, I know the game back to front. Yeah. Like, I know that shit back to front. Yet, what, what it builds within you... Yeah, character. And, and the thing where I fell flat on my face is after I tore my groin, I lost basketball and I plummeted because I thought my identity was within the sport. Yep. Which it wasn't. Same. I didn't know who I was and that's why I plummeted. Yep. And I guess sometimes that's why things happen to you for you to to go through your self-discovery and stuff yeah yet i found a new love for the game and the understanding for the game is far greater than what i ever imagined and that the gratitude towards that i don't think anything can fuck that up and i'll never fuck that up again it's an unbelievable feeling to have like yeah. the game I, lo I love basketball <laughs> and people think it's just like a sport or a game but it's really a lot more than that it is a vehicle for self-development and self-discovery. When you commit yourself to a discipline, when you commit yourself to one thing, and you're saying, this is the thing that I'm going to do and be as great as possible. There's so at. much to learn within it, though. Like, you don't realize the details that are involved. Mm -hmm. You don't realize, like, the, the shapes. Like, you're talking geometry. Like, man, when you get into met metaphysics and geometry, that's a whole different ball game. Like, th that game changes when you figure shit out the game changes and it's, it's not a game anymore it's like whoa this shit's deep mm. totally different level it's like I, I get so frustrated with the kids sometimes I'm like hey just run a flip pick here and go set a down screen goes and it's like they're, they're looking at me like what the fuck are you talking about it's like man like I wish you guys would get this shit but but I you didn't get it when you were there man, you give it to man. them I had some great coaches don't get me wrong like I had some great coaches I always played in good teams when I was a junior always had great coaches so um it's a matter of taking what you've learned in 30 years and giving it to a bloody 10 year old and then making them 10 times greater than you ever were mm -hmm. and, and i think that's a, that, that'll be my biggest accomplishment seeing some of these kids go to the nba or go play euro league and then being there to support them through that journey i think that's the uh that's the ultimate blessing that's your legacy for sure that's where meaning and fulfillment will come for sure what's already happening for sure just watering those seeds so i can see it and when you can see it up here and it starts to happen, that shit's really motivating. Really motivating. And that's what I mean. I wish everybody could feel what I'm feeling now and experience what I'm feeling. Mm. Shit. Any more questions, Matt? Always. <laughs> I feel like we could talk for hours more, man. How long's, uh, how long's passed? Two hours and a quarter. Nice. Just flew, man. You got another 15 minutes in you? <laughs> yeah, is there anything you want to... Like, we should do this. Do you want to do this again I'll one day? Yeah, later down the track. I I'd love to. I reckon 12 to 16 months down the track. Damn, that's a long time. 100%. Why wait so long? Let's talk shop when the shop gets built. Or we could just talk whenever we want. Let's talk shop when the shop gets built. <laughs> whenever you want, man. <laughs> the door is always open. For sure. Who else are you planning on having on the podcast? Everybody I want to talk to. Everybody. Where's, this Everybody I want Where's to your talk banner? To Where's your slogan? Like, we've got to get this shit moving. Like, half the reason I want to come out here is because I know there's going to be a shitload of people that tune into this podcast. So I said, hey, let's get the ball rolling. Depends how you define shitload. <laughs> um, I think, I try not to think about that. I try not to think about, like, views or the subscribers. Vision, the vision for this, like are you just giving people a platform to open themselves for what, what purpose? That, well, okay. As in, are you trying to help people out there or are you help, trying to help the individual or are you trying to help yourself through that individual? Like, Okay, good question. So I would say, and this is being brutally honest, the reason I created all those videos, the 48 Laws of Power, all the, all the book summaries, originally it was all a self-orientated endeavor. It was let me create something that's going to help me, right? Self-develop, self-discover, learn about myself and remember the stuff that I'm learning, okay? Now I use the tool of social media to broadcast that out to the world because I'm also self-aware of the fact that there are other people like me 
who are suffering, who are going through these things and they can perhaps take from it. Now that's just the byproduct. Really the first intention is, and for this podcast especially, I want to open up honest dialogues and conversations and connect with people because I know at the end of the day that that's life. People, life is nothing without people to me. Yeah. And so I want to connect with people and I want to talk to people, interesting people, learn from them, they learn from them. We just have a conversation because yeah. I don't think, I think it's a big missing component to myself and our society is this. Interaction, 100%. Yet physical interaction and verbal interaction, everything's online yes. or through phones or through text. When's like, the last time you looked another man in these fucking eyes and he bared his soul to 100%, you? 100%. Tell me. 100%. 100%. You don't feel comfortable doing it in general population. Everything's very, everything's a facade. Mm. Everything's a fucking, everything's a painting on a wall. Like, oh yeah, that's nice to look at, mm. but where did it come from? There's a lot more than meets the eye. 100%. And we should give us, ourselves the chance to learn about that. And so I'm not going to pretend like I have some altruistic endeavor to... <sighs> like like change so many people's yeah. lives like i'll admit that if that is the intention i'll admit it if it's not it's just by 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 the nature of this just by proxy of this happening if i keep doing this something for the next 10 years yes it's gonna it. happen and, and you'll gravitate to your purpose through creating something like this that that was just a platform for conversation yes that's awesome because i think it gets fucked up and distracted when you have the intention of all right I want to grow. I want fame. 100%. I want this. No, the intention isn't right. And it's like this here is, is far purer than you saying, like writing up a dialogue and be like, I'm going to ask him this, 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 Ugh. this. It's not natural. You see those interviews. We all have all seen those interviews. <laughs> Bless you. Oh, shit. Bless you. We're good. <laughs> Again. Um, you see those interviews with people and the interviewer will, I don't even like the idea of an interview. Everything's choreographed. Yeah. But, you, you last question. What's that? What's that? A current affair. Everything's so fucking. Uh, uh, yeah. And then I try to get what they want. And it's like, it's not like. Let me that. catch it's you. Like, I got you. Let me get a snippet. Oh, but you said this and then I twist you and manipulate. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. What the fuck? I didn't, yeah. even, I didn't even mean it like that. They're like, trying to get you. Yeah. I'm not trying to get anybody. Yeah. I'm going to call you out if you say some shit. Yeah. I'm not trying to get you. Yeah. Um, but the, these interviews, people will talk, they'll say something interesting. And the interviewer won't even acknowledge what is being said. 100%. All right, I asked that question. question. Next question. Fuck that. Yeah. That's why you'll never see questions here, except I'll, I'll fuck. I'll, there's always exceptions like, to a rule. It's, it's just one of those things. It's like, you, no one's going to come here out of their own free will unless they know you. I won't ask them unless I probably know them. But here's the thing, though. If you're trying to get those kind of people on these kind of if you're trying to get people a bit further up the chain yeah that's gonna these, happen these conversations need to happen yeah people like myself need to come out and be completely fucking raw with yeah. shit so then they come in and be like alright we got something here yeah and you never know who might invest in you through that process because I see you're a legit human being who is doing this with good intent yeah that's it yeah. That's what I mean. I, I I couldn't justify coming in and talking about my business and fucking money and fucking all this other you bullshit can. Oh, that shit doesn't it doesn't interest me it doesn't interest me like yeah i'll be a millionaire one day yeah i'll have a massive fucking house is that I'll important be. to you or is that just there's, like there's zero importance that's why i don't talk about it i know i know it will come that will be the the benefits and fruits of my labor yet it has no relevance or importance to the biggest game of things you can't take that shit with you when you die so you're not supposed to this but i want to leave yeah. it here enjoy it as much as you can enjoy it and i want to leave it for but, the next um, motherfucker for sure inheritance man something i never had is something i'd like to pass on yeah i think that's really dope like the whole thought of yeah. having something for your children to inherit i think that's huge but at this it's a weird thing you give your child the thing now what you had i think is a gift the pain and suffering you endured was a gift because it created something fucking amazing now yeah i think the idea of like show me a son show me a great son of a great man it's it's like it's, rare you can't compete they can't compete and it's like you get stuck living in the shadow and it's yeah. like I, i've met a few people that are millionaires yet they live on a very low scale of living and their children have no idea no you say that in a positive way like it's low-key humble lifestyle humble lifestyle they're millionaires and their children have no idea because of the way that they're living 
I found that that's, that's preferable to me. I found that so so humbling. Mm. It's like these kids have the bare necessities, like bare necessities. Yet their parents are millionaires, and it's like that's so empowering. And it's like you never know who's in front of you. You never know who's helping you. You never know who's watching you. You never know who might invest in you. They're just trying to suss you out. So it's like you got to be legit. You got to be legit. What does that mean, legit? Legit. Do what you say. Say what you do. Yeah. Like keep your word. Keep your word. Live live with integrity. Yep. Live with, live with princi- principles. Live with values. Stand by your virtues. Um, sacrifice everything compromise nothing don't never compromise who you are for a dollar never compromise who you are for a position never compromise who you are for a contact uh, and that's what it comes down to and if you live to your highest standard you will end up where you're supposed to be well at the right place at the right time yeah people prostitute themselves out for yeah. fucking all sorts this of this and that i can't justify it man i can't I've, I've never been able to i've never been that like i've never to sell out is something that i've never done I've never been able to. I don't understand it. Like, I'd rather say no than no in, within myself that I'm selling out. It's an integrity thing. Mm. Yeah, integrity no? as well. It's like, I 100% agree. Yet, with, I had broken character. I wasn't in living in an integral life. That's a sellout too. I was living as a sellout. Until you weren't. When, and when I say never sell out, consciously selling out. Yeah, unconsciously I'm a sellout because I'm not living with good character and integrity anyway, right? Mm, I never not, thought about that. I'm not living to the best of my ability. That's that's selling out to a higher level. Yeah, selling out consciously and undercover deals and all that shit. That's that's yeah, can't justify that shit. Mm. But yeah, Here we I are. like this man. It's pretty cool. It's very simple, man. It's just two tables <laughs> and a black cloth. Everyone wants Someone's to get fancy. Watch this thing and be like, what the fuck was that <laughs> good it don't matter to me fuck it i mean and you say about putting the things up here you know, no, maktub man. it'll come how's um what do you see moving forward and how are you with the whole meditation thing every morning every morning how long as long as my mind requires requires how long can you stay in that state without taking yourself out it depends how you define in that state because I'm... Are you conscious while you're meditating? Do you lose... Do you lose consciousness there'll be glimmers. of your senses? There'll be glimmers. So... That's the fight. The or freedom, not the fight. The it's freedom, the let go. The freedom in meditation is getting yourself to a stillness in body, mind... Getting yourself to a stillness in body, mind and spirit that you can't feel anything yeah, yeah, here anymore. It's blank. When you get to there, yeah. that is a feeling of euphoria. Yeah. It's rare. That is the best feeling you will ever feel in your life. Yeah. Being one with your surroundings. Uh, yeah. It's unbelievable. Now that freedom is what I strive for here. And consciously throughout the world. It's, man. And, and I can feel myself internally getting there and it's, it's a very rewarding feeling. I think people intimidate... I just want to share it and it's like, I just want to share it. I share what? Share that feeling. Yeah. Be like that person. It's unbelievable. But finding those moments, I think, is is difficult. And it's almost the more you try and grab it, the more it gets away from you. You can't grab it. You have to let go. It's not yours to grab. That's the ego. Yeah. Like, hey, let go, motherfucker. You're a part of this shit. Stop trying to control it. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) The more you try and grasp on and chase... It's not to say you can't chase something and achieve it. But I'm saying, like, I think that it's analogous to, like, women. Yeah. Like Like, or a man and a woman. Like, men will chase women. I think there's an element man, of that. I've, I, I've passed that stage, man. Like, I don't chase. Like, we're created to be chased too. You know what I mean? That too. Men, men chase women all the time. Like, man, you're, you're designed to be chased too. Mm-hmm. That's a, with everything. It's a game. Like business, whether it's okay. sexual, whether it's physical, whether it's financial. Like, put value on your head, man. Let people come to you. Right. And allow it to just come. That's it. Uh, you, you try and, like... The world can sense your neediness I and your desperateness. Rich. I want to be famous. I want a wife. I want kids. Yeah. I want a house. I want a car. Uh, it's like, man, fuck all that. That's too much. You're losing way too much energy with all that shit. Yeah. With all this desperation to achieve superficiality. Your top five, man. You never went through your top five. Oh, it's a top. It's because there's a top. Uh, top twelve. Top eighteen. <laughs> yeah. Um, the guy, top, top five most empowering people that you look up to. Um, that would discredit 
all the other. No, not really. Why? Well, all right. When I say top five, who are the five that come to mind off the top of your head that you can distinguish as your top five? I would say my grandfather, mm-hmm. Saad. Why? Because just something small on each of them. Sure. A man that embodies. That's dad's dad. Mothers. Oh, so he's Egyptian. Yeah. That's gotcha. with the name Saad, born in Egypt. Um, a man who embodies uh, true uh, mental strength and discipline and will. Mm-hmm. Um, who's next? Picking five is difficult. I think. Hmm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'll give you a uh, an older historical figure, Leonardo da Vinci. He, in the way that you can do multiple things, you can be a uh, a polygamist. Is that the right word? You can be a master of many crafts. You don't have to pick one. It almost allowed me to think more freely and be uh, whoever I want to be and be different types in of all people. Different areas. Yeah. You can, you can be the best version of yourself in multiple areas. Absolutely. David Goggins. You like the, man, he's a beast. Yeah. Like a, when I first heard him, he unlocked. He, he inspired me to come out and be honest like this. Like, he inspired He talks about that. He's the guy he, that talks about he, it. And, and that's the thing. It's like, he did it. Why the fuck can't I, man? And exactly. it's like not giving a fuck about anyone's judgment in the process. Mm-hmm. Like he's accomplished great things and talked about it. Like you said, oh, you've talked about this stuff and you haven't even done anything yet. Like it's like, I'll get there and there's still more to... Th- no, you're more. doing it. It's not that you haven't done anything. There's still more to communicate. Yes. I mean, there's a lot more. It's like, but with great heights comes great depth. So let's reach a little bit higher. Exactly. David Goggins, what do you like about him? David Goggins helps me <sighs> that's that it's like, it's like a mirror is that, is that that pussy component the uh the soft the weak the i think so component? i think it's a mirror i think you it's a mi- that, yeah. it's a mirror to reflect your inadequacies and you know how people say like your respect that's dope man that's respect what that's dope just just saying that shit that you're not good enough saying that shit and you're inadequate 100%. most people don't want to say that about themselves i'm a fucking pussy i'm yeah. weak as shit i'm incapable that's right yet all the opposites exist, is, exist as well they can you can but you also realize your potential through realizing your inadequacy but you have to be honest with all those things exactly not many people have the balls to do that though everyone's in denial it's like oh but this person did this and this person did that and this happened it's like dude it's fucking you they don't control you you allow them to or their perceptions mm-hmm. you allow them to 100 percent David Goggins. So he, 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 he sparks uh, a willpower and fire in me that um, keeps me going. Uh, well, it's not him so much, but it's like what people can spark inside of you that you already have. When did you get onto him? On his first podcast on Joe Rogan. Yeah. Yeah, so two years ago. That was his first one? That was his first big Who one. Who was the other guy? Was it something bail, bail, bail you? So, yeah. who, who David talked to? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's another. There's oh, Tom. A, Tom, that's the one. Yeah. yeah. No, that, th- that podcast I is think, pretty good too. I'm pretty sure Rogan came came yeah. first, and then he went off. Now he's all he does. Is, like he doesn't have a job. He just fucking. How sick is that? Yeah, he does whatever he wants to do. He writes. He works out and fucking conquers life. Jordan Peterson smashes fucking mountains in yeah. forty degree weather. Yeah, super dope. He's he's an animal, <laughs> and it reali- you realize before I get into it, Jordan is you realize that there is that potential within all of us. Now I don't mean like you can set the most amount of pull ups in the w- in the world. I don't mean that you can go do a Navy Seal buds multiple times. I mean you don't have to do that. I mean your version of that. You have a unlimited potential that you can tap into There's only if you realize you're supposed to do with that. Yeah, exactly. And you won't know until you tap into it. Exactly. Some people might tap in at 20, some people might yeah. tap in at 30, some might not get it till they're 48. Mm-hmm. But if you're persistent with it and consistent with the path, then it will happen inevitably, I think. And realizing that your <sighs> You have you have more. You have more left. There's more in the tank. Hundred percent. You can give more. Stay and I- hard. <laughs> Stop being a fucking pussy and get out there and run. 
it's fucking raining outside and I'm still fucking out here and someone told me to go home and I said, fuck it. I'm a fucking Navy SEAL, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Just got to keep going, bro. That's it. <laughs> and so in, on the back... And so with that energy, the start of 2018, have you heard of uh, Kokoda Trail, Thousand Steps and Daniel? Been there with the kids, yeah. Fuck yeah. I love that shit. So the first 30 weeks of the year... I said to myself, every weekend I'm going to drive 45 minutes out here and I'm going to run this motherfucker. You ran the steps? I did or both. The, yeah? How so many times? One, once. One week, I run it as f- fast as I can. One weekend, I run up once and I exhaust myself. The next weekend, I run up live, but the other one. Yeah. And I try and beat my time every week. Yeah. I'm not going to be some hero like I did that yeah, fucking yeah, all day. Of course. I did it once. Yeah. And I turned up every week it's for 30 tough, weeks. Man. And it's fu- it'll fucking... Once a week for 30 weeks. Yeah. That's tough. And it'll... It's not just that because you realize... It just comes down to thresholds. And regardless yeah. of what your best is, it's like, all right, let's try two this time. All right, I'm going to gas out halfway. Like, are you man enough to go back again? And it's like voluntary push... Volu- vol- voluntarily. Vo- voluntarily pushing yourself yeah. to a point of pain where you have to overcome it. Yes. And like he talks about, it's like, I'm not a fucking... What did he, what did he say he's not? People, somebody who inflicts pain on themselves. Masochist. Like, masochist. Like, I'm not a masochist. I just enjoy pushing myself to my limits. That, that's literally how I coach my kids, man. Within reason. Like I went through a bit more crazy stuff overseas. But out here, I've tamed that a little bit. But it's all about maximizing potential. Like how do you know who you are mentally until you go through it physically? The, the body follows the mind. Mind is body, body is mind. So let's take the body and then let's take the body to the to an extreme and then be like, all right, this is how your mind works, guys. You guys are more than capable. I, I wish I had that at a young age. I wish I had it in a controlled environment. Yes. If someone can like there's, craft there's, you. 100%. There's, channel ma- you. there's massive care with what I'm doing, yet also very, 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 very strict in regards to how hard I push them. It's going to mold them yeah 100%. into a stronger human beings they're going to thank you well you would anticipate they thank you for it one day so after the Kokoda trial how did you do that for 30 weeks 30 weeks in a row I made it public on Strength of Sard I said hey you want to join me come do it um, did I, people come? fuck all people came fuck all I know you invited me a couple of times to do yoga are you still doing yoga teaching? yeah I'm would a yoga would you, I'm like, would you like to do something with my kids? I'd love to yeah Maybe oh, we can done. tee something up. I, I want to uh, introduce a little bit of yoga just to help them with... It's an amazing tool, man. That, and yeah, we'll see. Uh, maybe I can speak to... Who was the boxer that works out Campbell here? Campbell Somerville. Yeah, we can speak to Campbell about doing some classes with the kids as well. That'd be great, man. Get That'd some awesome. physical martial art training. Do some different stuff there. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, yoga is definitely something I'd like to help with them implement in their schedules. Whether or not they pursue it or not, that's up to them. It's right? mindful movement. 100%. It's important. It has so many layers of it. And the more you do it, the more you reach higher levels. It starts physical, it gets to mental, and it becomes emotional and spiritual. Mm -hmm. You elevate through the levels of higher. You're fully immersed in what you're doing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You... Do you know, like, through that, is there... Have you noticed much about your flexibility and the way your body moves? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm in the best shape of my life when I'm running, lifting, and doing yoga. Yeah. And we so spoke about it a long time ago. I never followed through with it. I'm sure after after this, after this, I will 100 percent commit. I'd be, I'd be, it'd be an honor to work with your kids, man. I know yeah. them with you. That'd be great. We'll talk about it off Sounds off air. Good. Off air business. <laughs> <laughs> business. Let's make things happen. It's already <laughs> happened. Jordan Peterson is the fourth guy who you don't know, um, yeah. but he has challenged many philosophies and ideas more so in the last couple of years than almost anybody in my life. These men have become like father figures to me. It's yep. a very odd thing, but it's also like... Do you see yourself later down the track meeting them? Is that something you see within yourself? Meeting them? Yeah. I I feel like I meet them every day when I, I have a, like a ritual, which I won't talk about, but... Um, Ooh, rituals. Yeah, morning routine rituals. Are you in a secret society? Uh, maybe. I might, be in Ill- <laughs> I might be in Illuminati. Don't tell anybody. Yeah, fuck all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear the one with Christian and Jay? I heard a little bit of it. Christian went deep. <laughs> At the like, hour bro, mark. Christian, don't talk like that, man. They're watching you. <laughs> <laughs> They're watching you, man. <laughs> he didn't care about that. Um, 
So yes, Jordan Peterson. Um, why, why I say that is I see myself. Say what? I, what would you ask? I uh, forgot. No, I said, uh, do you see yourself meeting them? Maybe. Like I, I, I haven't I, thought about it. I see myself at a level where I'm working with them, not the you know you, the people that you said yet. I see myself on that tier with those sorts of people. I get that. I can see why you say that. Like, not now, yet it will happen. I, I believe that. I can. I, and it's know, like I want to be around that. Right. Like, I want to be challenged. I, I want to enter those sorts of um, arenas and be the weakest, softest, dumbest, stupidest motherfucker in the room and just look at these guys and be like, what can I learn? Where can you guys help me get to? Like, I want that. I, I have never been challenged, man. Like, I don't know, you can, you can ask Sukat. Um, You've never been challenged? Man, I, th- there's times where I've, I've, I've reached states of consciousness where I can train for six, seven hours straight and not be tired. Like, I, I've reached those states before my concentration and focus is so dialed in that within six hours of training on the flow. basketball court Run to flow flow state 100 percent. but it's like i've never been challenged to that point i've taken myself to that point and why i'm less inclined to learn from people is i've never seen people reach that level of whether it's flow state or consciousness or whatever you want to call it so it's like if i've pushed myself to that limit why would i you know what i mean like i, I want to meet people on that level I want to meet people where it's going to be like, hey, jump in the fucking gym with me and let's see what you got. Oh, they're out there, motherfucker. Yeah, but please contact me. Can I please work with you? Can I please learn from you? Can you please help me get to a level where I'm maximizing my potential? Like, I want people like that to contact me and, and work with me because I can't see them. Well, then you better contact them. There you go. Fourth one was Peterson. Fifth one, probably Joe Rogan at this time of like my life. Joe? Yeah, is that based uh, on the podcast or just who who he is? Both. Yeah, I really respect the way he has conversations. Yeah, he usually doesn't pick teams and pick sides. He's able to have open dialogues and change his mind about things and not take himself too seriously, which I've 100%. done historically. Number two, he embodies a mental and physical uh, lifestyle of wealth wealth of the mind yeah i like that he's not body. scared he's like he's not scared to come out and smoke weed on the show or do, yeah like, he's not afraid like, like i like that and he's it's like and if you have himself. a look he's got a lot of followers and for someone doing all that shit people don't judge him because it's like hey man this guy's a good dude oh, people do but, but, yeah, but he, fuck them man. yeah he doesn't if they're judging you they're judging themselves and that's all it comes down he doesn't to. worry about that yeah and that's the level he's at psychologically where he is able to be on such a platform and not think about that, not even wor- acknowledge and he's worry about here that. In the present yeah, he's moment, focused. doing what he's doing. And that is what I want. That's what I aim and be. The amount of information that has come through his podcast yeah. and, and the people that he's got on there has helped so many people around the world. And it's like, man, someone that I love is Wim Hof. Like, mm. have you done much research on Wim Hof? Mm-hmm. Have you done all his breathing techniques and stuff? I have experimented with some of it. And like a higher state of consciousness. The reason why I'm sitting here today has a lot to do with him as well. There and you it's go. like, if you actually go out there and do some of the stuff these people are saying, dude, this is changing your body. This is changing your mind, like, and, and for the better. For the better. It's real interesting stuff, man. Goggins is definitely huge. And, and what Joe Rogan's doing is allowing all these great people to sit on his platform. He's a vessel. That's massive, man. And why can't I be a vessel for conversations That's as well? That's why I'm here, man, because I want to support what you're doing. And so we'll see, motherfuckers, in 20 years, 30 years. Oh, fuck 20. I see. You'll, you'll be somewhere within five to eight it's already done 100 percent. it's already done 100 percent. but i like putting big numbers on it because i don't <laughs> want to trick myself into thinking this shit's going to happen tomorrow of course not. or anything's going to happen away slowly and then it's a, it's not a matter of getting just everybody on you're going to get oh, people yeah. who intrigue you yes and it's like through through that you'll find more people because intriguing people know intriguing people so and then your circle elevates but as long as you keep it genuine and your intentions are pure yeah then everything will manifest the way it's meant to manifest and the right people will come to you they'll be like oh who's that who's that guy yeah what do um what do you want to do with your tra- with your coaching like where do you see where do you see that going so i can answer the, that pretty the, easily you got the podcast going i know you were massive last time i saw you at the old woodfords you were massive into getting your body right and your gut health and yeah that was big priority yeah now it's trans- was, it, was that the foundation you were setting for something that you you were trying to do correct dope that was the foundation for I needed to repair what's inside in order for me to 
repair what's outside the physical transforming my physical health and physical presence and it's still something the path i'm on i went away to singapore people have heard this already but i got you haven't heard it before i left singapore you may have heard it before i left singapore 74 75 kilos i do my fucking work over there i study hard eat hard lift hard train hard put on five six kilos disconnect completely Yes, it was yeah. the fucking best. And to disconnect completely from external distractions and purely focus on yourself. Yes. It's an amazing it, feeling. It was the obligations of here, null and void. Yeah. Mostly. Yeah. Which is great. And now it's let's get to the next level. Mm. And so I'm trying to transform. I am transforming my physical presence and health um, because I think... From an aesthetic standpoint or more performance standpoint? Both. Okay. Beautiful. I do believe both are important. Absolutely. Yeah. People want to demonize looking good or fucking aesthetics yeah, is not like important you, but it is you you respect someone who looks good and it's yes. like how did you do that yes like no shit it's respectable yes i mean it's the same thing with me like i since i've been coaching kids i i can't think of the last time i went out and got smashed because i see it like if i'm out there getting smashed and then i go and coach these kids i'm not really living in the image that i'm holding them accountable correct to. and it's like i gotta be that guy for them Be the and guy. for myself. Yes. You know what I mean? So it's not just about you. I understand 100% where you're coming from. And, and the thing is, if, if, if I walked into this gym and I see that you're, you're lean, you're fully uh, immersed in what you're doing, I'd be like, this guy knows his shit. Mm-hmm. Whereas someone might be overweight or someone might be doing extracurricular activities and you sort of question whether or not they are in the health and fitness industry and if their intentions are pure. Correct. So. And so we must hold ourselves to the standard of excellence if we are to really affect change within ourselves and other people how old are you 25 just turned 25 recently it's huge man like i said you saw where i was at 22 like i was even further behind than you at 25 yet i've come into a new arena now what's the right word um let me get this i'll get it i haven't got it <laughs> <laughs> i was kidding i paradigm. got it. new paradigm paradigm beautiful paradigm shifting that's it so when you hit a new new paradigm or a new level a lot of learning to do mm. so i could sh- it's funny you pull out diaries or you wrote to yourself yeah i could do the same for myself yeah. dude i've got so i got hundreds embarrassing it's like it's like i was always shit. fighting to play always fighting to play yet i had troubles over here or troubles over there and it's like it, it wasn't the right time it wasn't the right place like still sorting through still cleaning still sifting still doing all that stuff but journals man like that's where it's at. Yeah. You like I have I actually enjoy going to bookstores now and having a look at what kind of journals like man, I love it. It's that. nice, man. Yeah, like I like the having design. a look at different journals and read like I love that now. Mm. Like I find uh I find happiness in that sort of stuff now, so it's very, very strange. Mm. Yeah. So to answer your question. Yeah. I guess the mission not I guess the mission is to create I know why the Superman the Superman symbol just popped up when you said that. Mission. <laughs> Why? He likes to stand in there like, hey, I'm about to take over the world. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Take over my world. Yeah. We all have a world to take over and that's our own. Mm-hmm. And that's what's happening between our two ears. Yeah. And so it's up to us. I say easy analogy like driving the car, driving the ship. Yeah. You go better drive that thing. You better drive that motherfucker or someone else will. Yeah. And if, once that happens, you're out of control. 100%. And so most people are out of control, man. And so... To me, uh, it's a being the best holistic generalist. You know, what do you do? I'm a generalist, right? I want to be the best holistic generalist um, dedicated to the pursuit of a school of world-class health and wellness services to optimize human health, performance, and longevity, right? That's a mouthful, Would, but it's... Could you... S- so it's like a double-edged sword here. I'll ask the question because okay. because I'll ask the question because I believe that you're destined for something massive. Could you see yourself working at Fifth Element Wellness? Absolutely. I've already thought about that. If I if I, if it was more sustainable for me, but then again, it's an excuse I've created for myself. Jeremy Borzillo travels an hour to get here every day. I think uh, based on based on what I know about you and based on what I know. Who, of who you are I think that I don't just think that I think I can be an even with I say this with all due respect an even better more well-rounded individual than Dave O'Brien 
They're different humans out there, man. Yeah. But I can be that guy in my own respect and have my own thing. 100%. But then I ask the question is, does the world need another gym? Does the world, what is the, what, it, it, what do we need? There's a lot of them, man. It's, it's, I think the world needs more holistic approaches. I agree. To human development. Yes. And whether that's through sport or whether that's through gym or whether that's through business. Like that's how I want to run my business, a holistic approach. Like there's many parents in within my circle now that have started running or training for marathons or training for triathlons just because of the words that I speak to my kids during the training sessions. Like that's fucking huge, man. I started coaching off five kids for free and it's like that five has turned into whatever the amount is now. I haven't counted. Yet that gesture in the beginning has expanded into something that I call a business now, yet I'm running it holistically where there's genuine care in the development of everybody in that room, not just the kids I'm coaching. It's powerful shit, man. You created it. It's crazy. You did it. No one else. Oh, well. A lot of people influence it. (laughs) That's true. Uh, And there's a lot of people I, I know for a fact, and I don't know about you, there's a lot of people that I know for a fact have helped me that haven't verbally discussed it and don't want to be recognized Take for helping credit. me 100%, yeah. which I'm very grateful for, very grateful for, because like I said before, I've got too much pride to ask for help, too much pride to uh, be dependent on somebody else. Um, and there's insecurity attached to that 110%. So I know for a fact there's been people out there that have helped me that I haven't um, thanked consciously or verbally I'd like to thank them through my work. So, yeah. You live you live the life of excellence you want? I, I want that and to be the thank you. Yeah, that's it. That's a yeah. thank you to your godmother. Not just her, there's, there's a lot of people. I, I know there's a lot of people that probably wanted what was best for me that I didn't accept at the time. So it's a, it's a thank you to them as well. Yeah. I think that's a good place to end it on gratitude and thank you let's do it sounds that's good that's three i appreciate hours. you having me here that's super dope man and uh if i can help out with getting more people down i'll definitely direct them your way bless thank you but um appreciate you coming yeah, on and keep and supporting this get the uh get the views out there let's get this man uh what he wants because i can see it i don't know about you in time super dope man appreciate, appreciate you it. ivan ivan alexander yes yeah, right thank you we're just talking chimps at the end of the day, man. Don't talking forget it. Fucking chimps. See you, chimps. You look like a bit of a chimp too. Yes, yeah, chimp, chimp.